Welcome back. Screen fruit glamour. May we see screen fruit glamour? This is going to be an audible one. Well, it's not going to be an audible one. It's going to be hard to see the screen at first because of the glare. I can't see him solving that screen. Anyhow, <laughs> what's happening? Crypto farm. Happy, happy Wednesday. Good morning and welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here, whether you're tuning in right now live or whether you're tuning in in the future. I appreciate you taking the time out to consume my content. So thank you. Thank you. Hope you woke up happy. Hope you woke up he um, healthy. Hope you woke up. Be grateful we woke up. I know it's a weird thing to say, but we should be. Good morning, guys. Sean. Oliver, Cole Steele, good morning, baby, good morning. I'm up a little late again today, let me shuffle here, because I want to make sure you can hear something. Will it matter about me being able to see the screen too much at the moment, as long as I can see the comments, can I see the comments? Yep, yeah, I can see the comments. That glare, mate, I'm going to have to sit that way. All right, do a cheeky little dude. Whoa, bro, bro. Right, Chris Larson's been on Block Stars, guys. Yeah, give a minute. <laughs> Chris Larson has been on Block Stars, and um, I want to listen to it, react to it, discuss it with you um, because he's gonna. I've not listened to it yet. I'm gonna be honest. It's about creating a sustainable global economy with Chris Larson. Thumbnail says the lot. Um, Chris Larson and David look back at the birth of digital assets and discuss why early e currencies like Beans and Second Life's Linden Dollars failed to take off, and also Toshi Nakamoto's seminal white paper on Bitcoin was perfectly timed. Perfectly timed, they say. So, for those who didn't know, David Schwartz has started a podcast interviewing people that he believes are block star stars in the space, you've got in interesting visions, ideas, have been in the space, so he's interviewing them. Now, he has done others about the podcast, the first one, got sleep in my eye. He's done how sustainable blockchains will boost adoption with someone else. He did increasing crypto literacy for everyone with someone else. But Chris Larson, one of the fathers of Ripple, the original CEO, um, before... Brad Garlin House, on it talking about creating sustainable global economy, right? So we're going to have a listen to this, and I have to let me know in the comments if the volume of, volume of it's poor, because I'm, I, want you, I want your volume, I want you to be able to hear it. Morning, Alan. Morning, Eco Africa. Um, Craig, love you all. Good morning. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all happy. Um... Listen now. Is it playing or what? What's going on? Welcome to Blockstars, Ripple's podcast that features leaders in crypto and blockchain. Can you hear that? The well, good. The current landscape to listen to with me. I'm your host, Ripple CTO and XRP Ledger co-founder, David Schwartz. And I'm joined today with Ripple co-founder and executive chairman, Chris Larson. Great to have you on our first episode. Thanks, David. It's great to be here. You announced on Twitter that you had tested positive for the coronavirus for COVID-19. We're recording this remotely. It's April 2020. We're in the midst of a shelter-in-place order and a global pandemic. Uh, we're very happy to hear that you've recovered and are doing well. What was that like? Thanks for asking. And, and by the way, it's a good thing we didn't, you know, first meet this way remotely like this, because I, I don't know if we would ever work together. So much better in person. But I appreciate, you know, having me here today. Sure, it was a weird good. thing. Uh, having gone through uh, having COVID-19 lasted for about two weeks. Um, luckily, my wife and I both had it. We were able to just stay at home. Maybe one or two scary days around day 10. That's yeah, kind of typically what you hear. Just a little heads up, the main thing that I'm hoping for here is they start talking about reserve currency a little bit because that's what it was all about back then. 
all the countries, the chat, like we say, the UN, China, everyone from 2008 onwards was all going on about new reserve currencies. So what I'm dipping in about that, not just daily crypto, but it's going on about COVID at the moment, but we'll see where we're going. I'm going to let it play while I do, but and we'll, uh, he had a cold, yeah, pretty much, mate. Where uh, breathing got a little bit uh, tough. We've since fully recovered, which is great. Our doctor let us out of uh, isolation, so now we're merely in sheltering. You know, not much difference. Kids, our kids never got sick, and uh, we we're even able to give uh, blood recently because uh, some of the hospitals they do need some of the antibody blood to help other patients and do some tests on new treatments. So uh, it was good Get to do that. Get some other people that recover to to do the same there's gonna be a big need for that we're so glad to hear that you're back in full strength Interesting. thank you in november of 2011 i started working on what became the xrp ledger the distributed ledger that implements the decentralized digital asset xrp well, Chris Larson joined the project in 2012. Oof. can you take us back to the dawn of the cryptocurrency era so 2008, markets collapsed, Lehman Brothers had fallen, there was high unemployment, housing foreclosures, this sort of unshakable feeling of fear and mistrust that the financial system had led us astray. Can you explain how that led to what we now consider the dawn of crypto with the Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin white paper and what that paper promised? Yeah, I mean, I know that a lot of the crypto kind of community looks at Satoshi's white paper as really the beginning. I would actually argue that this has been something that, you know, people have been dreaming about for a lot longer than that. You know, if you go back, boy, you can go back even 20 years now, there was models like beans and floors. Obviously, they were not as effective or successful as Bitcoin proved to be, but they were kind of um, this continuation of kind of this desire to have this global currency that wasn't strictly controlled by governments. And then, of course, you had things like Linden Dollars, which was in Second Life. I think something that inspired a lot of people, we looked at that very closely because, again, we had been talking about uh, this idea of global currencies that were not controlled by governments for a very long time. A lot of people were talking about them. Folks like Katal Sun, the CEO of SBI, I remember being in Tokyo. This is probably in boy, 05, 06, and we were doing peer-to-peer -peer lending together. Yeah, that was the thing that he always talked about is something that's going to happen, want to be part of it. So I think there, there has been a long string of these things. You could even say Vermont dollars, some of the German community currencies that sort of sprang up uh, over the years and kind of faded away. But I think the thing with Bitcoin was it was the right technology. Can we just acknowledge that Chris Larson's had a 15 year relationship with Yoshitaka Katao? Can we just acknowledge that? Because I don't want to forget it <laughs> by the time we're at the end of this 30 minute video. Wow, 2005 and 6. Oh, it started again. Well, I think that would have led to a very different outcome. No. Oh, you motherfucker. What a fucking weapon. Sorry about that, but yeah, 2005, he met Yoshitaka Katao, 06, 05, 06, like, wow, I'm going to Spotify now, so I can, um, this is going to make me fucking log in though, aren't it? Not even put it on fucking Spotify yet. Fuck's sake, David. Apologies, guys. I started it from the flaming beginning then. I really don't, don't need to do that. I really, really didn't need that playing from the beginning. Fuck's sake. Well, that was a good start, wasn't it? 2005 with Yoshitaka Katao. It was interesting how Davis was legitimately. Like we said the other day, how he was, he was just acknowledged that from the 11th, uh, from 2011 to 2012, he was working on XRPL. Man, he was all over it way before then. Do you know what I mean? Wow, it's getting warm in here. That sun's going to bake me today. I might even go outside at one point. Right, let's start a fucking... I'm not, can't start again, but we need to get back on it. 
Um, blah, Ripple Block Stars. Maybe I should make, make sure my phone don't go off actually. One, one sec. Fun things you have to fucking do, eh? Just to keep phones awake. Um, display. Um, screen time out 10 minutes so it'll play for 10 minutes before it times out right that'll do ripple block stars podcast flipping x scott <clears throat> listen do or didn't do and felt the consequences of kind of this desire to have this global currency that wasn't we're there we're there controlled by governments you had things like Linden Dollars, which was in Second Life. I think something that inspired a lot of people. We looked at that very closely because, again, we had been talking about uh, this idea of global currencies that were not controlled by governments for a very global long time. Global currencies not, con not controlled by government. Folks like Supranational. Kintasa, the CEO of SBI, I remember being in Tokyo. This is probably in boy, 05, 06, and we were doing peer to peer lending together. And that was the thing that he always talked about as something that's going to happen, want to be part of it. So I think there, there has been a long string of these things. You can even say Vermont dollars. So Katow, always talking about it too. Currencies that sort of sprang up uh, over the years and kind of faded away. But I think the thing with Bitcoin was it was the right technology hitting at the right economic time. That's really what I think was the breakout moment. And that's kind of typical in technology where you, you have... Oh, it's the PC revolution. It's going to happen. I remember back in the early '80s, and of course, it fizzled out. Um, people thought, "Oh, it was a stupid idea," it, you know. But of course, it did happen, right? It just had to have uh, happened at the right time. And I think uh, Bitcoin had that uh, kind of perfect storm of fundamentally new technology, decentralized. So that was super interesting, right? Something that Linden Dollars, Beans and Floors couldn't do or didn't do, and felt the consequences of that. But it also hit at that moment when some key people lost faith in the world. Right? I mean, it was a scary moment. And it seemed to be sort of the solution to the crisis. I actually don't believe that's true. I don't think Bitcoin was designed, nor was the solution. But it caught the imagination of, I think, enough people, call them libertarians or... Uh, you know, people that had a different kind of utopian view of the world that had less to do with government uh, and banks. Um, it, it caught enough critical mass um, that it really got the flywheel going. And then others kind of joined on, maybe who didn't really quite believe in that, oh, this is going to blow up the, you know, the financial system and completely oh, sweep away all the problems we've had. Um, and I know, you know, we can talk a lot about trustless. Um, I've got probably different views on on that than many many of the people that are kind of attracted to this industry because it's trustless i, I don't actually don't buy that at all but um you know that was uh that was an inspiring notion and again it was enough to get that flywheel going where you know it created essentially a, a new industry you and i have both used the analogy of the ford model t um, that it didn't have any ma anything magic. There wasn't a massive technological breakthrough, but it was sort of the right combination of technologies at the right time in a way that you could see how all of the pieces could work together to solve a very realistic problem, that someone with vision could look at the Model T and say, like, wow, this could replace the horse. Mm -hmm. I think for me, Bitcoin had that sort of an inspiration. I looked at it and I said, wow, like, these technologies are really reaching the point where they could make some sort of an impact. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's exactly right. You know, sometimes I kind of look back at the thing and I mean, it definitely caught, it was successful, but given that it, it occurred during the financial crisis, I always kind of like wonder, would it have been more successful if it, would, it had been spawned by the Occupy Wall Street group? Because it actually wasn't, right? It was, it was, I think as far as we know, it was created in, in more of the kind of the tech utopian world, the world that you know, for better or for worse, we're, we're all a part of. And it was it was formed and, you know, kind of taken to the next level by that group of people with their belief systems, which is very different from the Occupy Wall Street, which unfortunately was a, you know, that was a trend that fizzled out. We actually got involved with that by giving free lunches for like a month to protesters in San Francisco. It was really inspiring. You'd go to these camps. That was truly kind of the reaction of the world that created the 08 crisis 
but that movement faded and it never had enough leadership and i think it wasn't looking at technology um it was almost more of an Amish. Like I you know, say, kind of Craig, we're all in bed together and have been for a very long time. Kind of 2005, the proud of. To very different outcomes. <clears throat> Maybe the Occupy group would have taken more of the progressive ideas, giving wide distribution of that currency versus the tech utopians who I think fundamentally are okay with kind of concentration of wealth. I mean, we're all guilty of that. But, you know, the whole crypto thing kind of was built on the same thing that spawned Facebook and Google, where, you know, kind of, I don't know, a lot of uh, confidence in markets and meritocracy that I think is a little bit misplaced. So it would have been really interesting if this thing had been in the hands, maybe even spawned by that true kind of uh, movement against what, what created the crisis and sort of capitalism. And I don't know, maybe that's a misplaced confidence, but um, I think it would have played out very, very differently. That said, though, uh, you don't want to have, you know, kind of great be the enemy of, of good enough. And, you know, kind of Bitcoin in the hands of the tech utopians was good enough to get things going. And we can evolve it from here. What do you think those early Bitcoin participants, members of the ecosystem, what do you think they were hoping that Bitcoin would do? Uh, I think they were they were true believers, libertarian to the core of um, the banks and governments are corrupt uh, and they're hopelessly broken, can't be reformed or fixed, and that this is going to sweep all of that away and that in the hands of just people, everything will be fine because everybody's power will be equal and then let meritocracy kind of take it from there. Uh, it's obviously too simplistic. This guy, I've got a feeling they brought Brad Garlinghouse in because Brad Garlinghouse speaks more bank. <clears throat> this guy don't speak like a banker. This guy speaks like like he he, he sees a communist society in, 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 in the future. And I will look at that after the video. <clears throat> communist state, and communist society, like socialism and all that. It's it, it, They're actually a little bit different. What When someone says communist society... It doesn't mean what we believe is a communist state, as in what we believe Russia and China to be. They are, as we believe, communist states. And an actual communist society, socialism, is, is a little... Is, it's different. It's the power in the hands of the people. This guy speaks a lot like that. I, 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 I'm actually starting to believe he had to step down because of the way he fucking speaks. And the bankers just want to, want to, want to jump on board because... When you watch the level playing field documentary we made the, um, the globalization he talks about globalization using all these buzzwords that used to scare people the new world order words and all that and then he, he, he's he's talking like it's for everyone like it's to help africans to help the homeless to help this to help that so it's interesting how he speaks and the fact that he's no longer ceo he stepped back which just shows him replacing the banks was seen as a weapon against the system, but these guys realised they had way shit. Yeah, but the thing is, the banks run the world at the moment. If through consensus, democracy through consensus, in the long term, we can actually take control back. It's never going to happen in the next 20 to, 20, 20 to 30 years, but in the future, maybe. We're eight minutes in on a 39 minute or so I'm just going to click play and continue listening. It's interesting shit. Right, because at the end of the day, these are still humans. Um... And that's kind of the fallacy here, I think, in general with Silicon Valley and also the tech people that led the, the cryptocurrency market. Um, too much belief in code so or what, Craig, trust not, in humans, right? It's almost this. I believe that's possible. You know, Possibility, word, definitely. Right? I think a misplaced confidence in code um, that will fix all the problems with humans. And, and then, again, that's why I just don't buy the trustless movement um, there's no way you can get around trusting fellow humans when you're living on, you know, this, 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 uh, planet in the middle of nowhere with 7 billion plus you know, people <laughs> in it. You, you've got to fundamentally trust your fellow human beings. So I think that's led, uh, that's, that was a false promise that's led us astray in many, many ways. And of course that's even more so when you get beyond the, the foundational component of, of these systems, whether it be Bitcoin or Trust Ethereum or XRP Ledger, um, we start building the applications on top of that. You just layering on more and more, Yo, more trust. I got to trust my exchanges. I've got to trust my custodians. There's just no way to escape that. So Trust I think that was kind of that was really the ethos. And I think at the end Reserve of the day, now looking back, you know, a decade, 
it was kind of wildly misplaced. So what should we hope for? If these technologies are successful, what do you realistically think that they could give us? I think uh, like all things in, in the way humans progress, it's, it's just another step to making things better. It's another tool that uh, if conducted, you know, with the right idea, the right vision, the right model at the right time, will make things better. Now, of course, we're all stumbling in the dark to figure out what those things are. More and more of them are becoming clear, as, as we can talk about, certainly what, what kind of, I think the, the, the view that we have at, at Ripple is on, on what one of those things or a couple of those things are. But yeah, these are incremental improvements. Uh, you know, you're kind of building on the shoulders of geniuses. First, you have a, a basic financial system controlled by governments. Things kind of evolve from there. And I think the crypto uh, currency movement is a very important step in kind of where financial systems go. But it's more this incremental building on a lot of good stuff and, you know, fixing some missing ingredients. There's a lot of missing ingredients in the global financial system, correcting some obvious problems. Um, and also kind of, you know, you're inspiring uh, the, the, the kind of neat thing about getting the, the libertarian technology kind of utopian believers um, in there, even if that might be misplaced, you're getting a whole new wave of of different people with different thinking, very smart, well, they're very well funded. That alone is enough to radically change the, the global financial system. So even if the, the all the promise of what people thought it was going to happen or, you know, what was going to happen, just that very big change sweeps a whole new community uh, into position and that can dramatically change things. So it, it's more of this, like all things, I think, incremental change over you know, kind of burn everything down, revolution, the old, again, as, as we've talked about many times, I, I uh, think the worst thing about Silicon Valley is the fetish of disruption. It's a toxic uh, idea. Um, it, this needs to be more, th you think of it as construction, right? You're kind of adding on to all the building that's come before because at the end of the day, all of those people that have lived and died in previous generations, yeah, many of them were flawed, many of them were corrupt, and many of them were brilliant, caring, um, wanted nothing more than their families and their communities to do well. The idea that all of it is bad is just wrong-headed and incredibly arrogant. So we got to pick and, and kind of choose again, what are the things you keep? What are the things that need to be changed? How is this going to build on top of it? Like all things. So. This guy wants a better world. You can tell the way he talks. He wants a better world. So what do we need for crypto and blockchain to change the global financial system? Do we just need more adoption? Do we just need to keep evolving the technologies? Do we need better integration with existing financial systems, scalability, all of the above? What do, what do you think? That's pretty much all of the above. Oh, you above. At the heart of it, it it's, you know, you, you have this great new technology. You know it's fundamentally different. It's a breakthrough. It's a new tool. And that was kind of the early days. I think the people they were attracted to it, they knew something was there, right? They didn't quite know how it was going to be implemented and kind of what the killer application is, but they knew something was there intuitively. And, and, and that's really, you know, that's how all things start, right? And then you go through, you know, kind of the years and years, the really hard work of, of trying different things on and trying to find the product market fit. Um, but so when you find those product market fits, which is all about solving a problem, right? Here's a problem. This thing is the solution. And then, of course, it's it's going out with the right message. It's not too radical. It's not too disruptive. But at the same time, isn't so boring and isn't so incremental that nobody pays attention. And that's been actually a terrific thing in, in crypto is that it, ha it has been in that sweet spot, particularly in the last, I'd say, five years, you know, where it's gotten everybody's attention throughout you know, whether it's finance or technology or governments or cons consumer companies, it's got their attention as something fundamentally that they have to pay attention to. Um, but it's also not so kind of revolutionary, which again is how I think um, Occupy Wall Street failed because it, there was no, like no solution, right? So it fizzled out, right? Whereas I think uh, in this technology movement, there is a right balance of it not being super scary for the incumbents. Um, and I think that's kind of really part of the job that anybody in, you know, in this industry, that's kind of 
their job one is is to reach out communicate a vision that says yeah you can be part of this this is going to help you and your customers we're not we're not trying to kill you we're not trying to blow everything up it's not a destructive thing it's actually again that next evolution that you have to be a part of if uh, you don't want to be you know kind of uh, lose your your current position and, and be irrelevant so that's a that so it's hard, what he's talking about there is a little bit thingy in it, but if you put it into layman's terms, you go to the bankers and you say, look, bro, we're not going to tear your legacy systems down, we're not disrupting them, we're not destroying them, we're going to flip them, and then it's eventually going to lean on this new system. It's what the ISO migration is going to be. From the migration, they're now going through to flip legacy systems into bi-directional messaging systems that can tap into ILP. They made the bed for them, and everyone just climbed in. Got nice and fucking cozy, mate. That's a, I think kind of where the industry actually is, and that's fantastic. We just all have to now keep up that the blocking and tackling over the next five, ten years. Before, I think we really see the the true transformational, you know, kind of possibility of a, a set of currencies that are not controlled by governments that now set. become take it. You just take it for granted that. These are like key elements of the of the global financial system. You're not quite there yet, but I think you digital are SDR going basket, mate. Do that, and that will be truly transformational for how the world works. So you and I have kind of focused on payments, and particularly international payments and cross border remittances. People in the United States, maybe who have family in Mexico, trying to send money back to them. Right, would you say Ripple XRP is a more right wing based community or left? He says Silicon Valley is toxic, which is mainly left. There. This is what I'm saying. They are left, mate. But they needed to look right to sell to the banks and that, didn't they? Which is why Brad Garland, I was coming, he was more of a right wing looking and sounding guy. Chris Larson sounds left as fuck and just wants to make Africans rich, mate. It's legitimately what it sounds like. Lizette, good night. <clears throat> it was the first morning out in California. Oh, my days. I um, really, really appreciate you tuning in with that kind of time difference. Thank you very much. So let's not beat around the bush and let's get it finished so we can proper chat about it then. Uh, I'm an American. <clears throat> I have a bank account. 20 -ish minutes left. I, don't, I rarely, if ever, send money internationally. I don't have family overseas. How would you explain to me what it is that needs to be fixed? Why do we need a revolution? What's broken? Well, it's kind of exactly the thing that was broken about communications before um, the internet um, was implemented throughout the world. It, it was this sort of lack of interoperability, these walls that, you know, kind of existed. I talked over that a little bit then, but that was a great question from David Schwartz. He was basically saying, if I'm the kind of guy who doesn't send money abroad, if I don't use remittance payments, I don't really see the problems that are existing in the banks, like, how do you talk me into it? Like, what what's the solution to help me. I'm not experiencing any of them problems. This is where it goes from solving the problems of the current system to making sure we've got a good enough foundation for the future system of the IOV when the next generation just want to flip anything of value. It's Between twofold. Regions, countries, communities, and that just created incredible friction. It, it prevented lots of ideas that were good ideas from having any chance from, of succeeding. And I, and I think that's kind of where uh, finance, global finance is. We talk about moving value, moving payments. That's that's fundamentally your financial system. Um, that's kind of where you are today, right? Um, it's balkanized. You know, the United States does not interoperate smoothly with Japan and, and, and the EU and uh, Brazil and India. And that is creating enormous friction, which is affecting everybody, not just people that have to send value from you know, if I'm, I'm working in Saudi Arabia and I want to send value to my family in Bangladesh, it's not just affecting them, it is affecting you because it's slowing down the potential of billions and billions of people that participate in the global economy. And it's, you know, it's creating this kind of possible businesses that are just, they're stillborn because they can't succeed in a world where moving value is that slow, that expensive, that fraught with errors as we see in systems like swift you know days to move value huge failure rates um you're just you're just blocking all this potential and all these new ideas that morning rising it, uh, implemented morning, Bob, by uh. that entrepreneur in bangladesh or you know that entrepreneur in india or saudi arabia nigeria and that's a that's a tremendous shame so and in fact i would i would argue we talked about this before is um this is kind of the key thing holding back 
globalization from working. This is why we have a pro problems with globalization because it's not finished yet. It's a work in progress until you get the financial component of it as inexpensive as global as communications work today or as shipping works today. You know, where they say four cents to send a ship, uh, a shirt clear across the world, right? Almost nothing to send a piece of data, but incredibly expensive to move value around the world. Um, globalization really cannot be at its full potential until you get that leg of the stool fixed. So it's really holding back the world, whether that's you, you know, going about your life in Ohio as a, you know, somebody who's only interested in the domestic market, or if you're somebody involved with uh, global trade between any number of countries. So we're all paying a price for that. So if we need all of those things, what do we need most? What do we need now? Yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot of things we need over the you know five, next five or 10 years, but I think kind of right now, you know, probably one of the biggest impediments of, of the overall industry is globally, uh, and certainly here in the US. We need- I'm in Manchester, England, Bob. I mean, we, we've gotten some, but there's really not enough to ensure that we have a thriving market. Just Google Ripple Block Stars, um, Sam. Ripple Block Stars. We are currently 19 minutes and 46 seconds into the 39 minute podcast. It's the most recent one. There is a few more on there, but I wanted to jump on this because it's Chris Larson. I knew he was going to go into a little bit of reserve currency. I knew he'd dip into globalization and that. I'm fucking loving this. I can't wait. I've even took notes, guy. I'm taking fucking notes so we can talk about it after it, mate, though. Let me get through this and we will, uh, We'll have a little chinwag about it because he's brought up a load of little things that I want to go slightly deeper into. Um, for anything from like what trustless reserve currencies solving problems current and future, the attention on blockchain globalization, looking at um, socialist societies. Uh, here in the US and in many markets around the world. So that would be a big one that I, I, I'm confident is going to get solved, but that's a, we don't have that yet. It's, it's an unusual situation. The problem is not so much that there are bad laws, but that it's very difficult to tell how the laws apply to things that nobody has tried to do before. And so as a result, it's extremely difficult to figure out whether what you're doing is legal or not, or how you can do it the right way. Yeah, and I think the other problem is that, look, there has been a lot of bad stuff in this industry. I mean, a lot of the industry was created specifically to take down banks and governments and the industry. So there's a lot of that you know, rhetoric, I think that was not uh, helpful. So I think you have regulators who are really trying, but it's, you know, it's really difficult uh, to clearly sort out the good stuff and the innovation and let that thrive, which I think, you know, widely, you know, uh, the US government and most governments around the world, they, they endorse that, but not open up these avenues for the bad players that would drive a truck through it. So, you know, it's classic. A lot of times you, you find yourself there, but I think with crypto in particular, it's so big, right? It's so fundamental that it, that's probably more of a problem than even in other fintech or other technology industries. One of the things that you and I and lots of other people in the industry have been doing is educating regulators so that they understand that there are good guys out there and what they're doing and that there are also bad guys out there and that they have to figure out how to be intelligent about it. Yeah, we have to just keep doing that. It's just going to take time. It's going to seem frustrating because, you know, government and regulation tends to work on a different time cycle than, you know, these quick, you know, kind of <laughs> you're born and you die kind of very quickly in places like Silicon Valley, right? So there's a, there's kind of a mismatch on kind of time scales. That's also a, a challenge. It just underscores why, these, you know, if you have a project, it, it needs to be really be thinking for the long term and not these kind of quick hits. But again, I think I think we'll get there. Um, I think we're we are on our way. We're in we're, we're in that hard part of charging up the hill. But I, I do think we'll get there. So let's uh, time travel to 2012. We didn't quite have a clear vision yet at that time of what problem we would solve or how we would solve it. We were developing the technologies that became the XRP ledger. We had a functional ledger and we were going to people in Silicon Valley and trying to say to them, we have a company that does what? What's the story? Well, that's, that's a good question. I mean, obviously the, the fundamental, you know, before there was a company, the idea was, can you build a better Bitcoin? You know, I think we're all fascinated by Bitcoin again. That was a turning point. Again, as we talked about a long line of, you know, trying to stand up a, a global currency that wasn't controlled by governments, but Bitcoin. 
The fundamental question is, did they want to build a better Bitcoin or did they want to build a banker's Bitcoin? That's most people's question, innit? Are they in bed with, truly in bed with the banks, doing what the banks want? Or have they took the, 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 the vision of Bitcoin and made it more trustworthy for banks? Do you know what I mean? There's, there's so many sides of these coins, the way we can look at it. <clears throat> and we never, don't think we'll ever get a definitive answer until the future when we see how it plays out. It was the, the breakthrough. But it had problems, right? And I think the biggest problem, I think the people that were attracted to the XRP project was Bitcoin just uses enormous amounts of electricity that can't be a sustainable long-term model. Now, I do believe, you know, there's going to be a core group of digital assets that will be successful. I think Bitcoin will be one of them. But it's, it really seemed clear that you could build a better version, got you all the things you needed with decentralization, you know, not having to have a central operator that verified transactions, but could do it in a way that wasn't going to burn enormous amounts of energy and, and pollute the world. Uh, that, was a, that was very inspiring. There were some other things that, that came into it as well through the Ripple project, of course, which was in addition to the creation of a new digital asset with without a counterparty, the ability for other things of value to be created on the ledger so that, again, you could improve uh, that idea of, you know, kind of interoperability, trying to exchange anything of value for any other thing of value. XRP would be the sort of the bridge between that. So that's something that didn't even exist in the, the Bitcoin ecosystem. You'd have to build that kind of outside. So that was also a, a big improvement. And then just the way it, it functioned, particularly around, you know, it being deterministic, not probabilistic. The idea of having miners that can rewrite history, I think is also problematic, particularly in payments where, you know, you... So when Google decided to not just be a website, they're going to have their own program, Google Chrome, they're going to have Google Search, they're going to have Google Maps, they're going to expand into more things. That's when Google became a major player and they won. And it's the reason they won. This is why Ripple's a major player and the reason they're going to win because they didn't just make a blockchain. They, 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 they basically front ran and had the vision for interoperability and the internet of value from the off. From, from many, many years ago, we're talking eight years ago here when it started getting onto that. And look at what it's growing into. It's absolutely unbelievable. You have to have this determination. <laughs> and it's why they'll win. Know, kind of the Google of blockchains. That were built into the system. So, you know, uh, I think initially it was, can you build a better Bitcoin that would do all the key things you needed, but corrected some of these you know, fundamental problems. And back then, I think that was kind of enough. Those early days of any ecosystem... I think you, you don't necessarily have to have product market fit. It's just like, okay, well, here it is. And then let others sort of pick up and, and build on it. That was probably one of the most fun things, seeing all the you know crazy ideas that were proposed and, and, and built you know on the, on the ecosystem. I think we started out kind of a consumer-based company. I think we quickly saw, though, that to really have maximum impact, that being uh, an enterprise company that worked with the existing financial players and new in challengers to the fin financial um, system was going to be much more successful because you know oh, these were organizations liable. that already had hundreds of billions of customers and had this fundamental problem and then in many welcome. ways we're doing things you know maybe 80 percent of what they're doing was just fine did not have to change but there was this one key component of cross-border payments, which is fundamentally broken because they were dependent on a system built in the 70s, SWIFT and this asynchronous, you know, SWIFT correspondent banking system, which is just, you know, a nightmare. So could we focus just on solving that? And that's what I love about enterprise. And, you know, my, my first two companies were consumer, so I, I also saw from that perspective, these consumer companies, you sort of are forced to recreate everything, even if maybe only 20% of what's happening is fundamentally changing. Whereas in enterprise, you can sort of piggyback on the successes of all these other teams that are incredibly smart, know their markets, incredibly well-funded, piggyback on all the things they're doing right, and then inject into it the 20% that can fundamentally be changed by a distributed ledger, for example, like XRP Ledger. So that seemed like a much better approach, and I think that's, I think that's paid off. Now, 10 years from now, 5 years from now, will they'll... Where the, will there be sort of the the Googles and the Facebooks, brand new companies that really take on fundamentally these existing companies that interact with consumers? Maybe, 
but I think I think we're not there yet. So there was this transition to the Internet of Value vision, this idea of making payments work as easily as email. What were some of your what were some of your reasons to change to that Internet of Value strategy? Why did that vision resonate with you? Yeah, I think um, it what resonated was again that kind of globalization has you know, kind of three legs and two of them have been implemented and one of them hasn't. And then that was, that was holding everybody back. So kind of an internet of value is, you know, it's kind of the final step in, in kind of this grand network of networks that in, that would include goods, data, and money. I mean, if you really, you really think about how the world works, you know, with the exception of labor, you know, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation about kind of this is a globalization documentary now, and I just want to point out, this is what proper, proper got us onto IOV and how big it was going to be and everyone sharing anything of value is where he's going to go on to like, he goes, he, he tends to talk about fire needing a, a, everything needs a trinity, don't it? Like the triangle, like fire needs fuel, oxygen, and um, flipping out, but it's absolute fire. He'll say it now. Labor, but um, a world where... I can ship anything anywhere and it's completely interoperable. And again, they basically wanted a cryptocurrency and ledger that became the shipping container. When we used to throw goods about, we had the, the interoperability of goods. We got it with a shipping container. The interoperability of data we got with the internet. We needed interoperability of value to be the trifecta of all that and create the fire that is IOV. The idea you can you can move a shirt all the way around the world for four cents. Just think how incredible that is without the thing having to be touched and repacked and all that. So that was working with shipping containers and all that. The internet clearly was working with um, essentially free data anywhere, a single way to address somebody anywhere. But the but the money part wasn't. So that just really resonated, right? So how do you create that shipping container for, for money? How do you create the IP for money? I'm not listening and to swear. That also led us, of course, to recognize that it wasn't just a distributed ledger that was going to have to be part of this. It was also going to have to be a new interoperability, uh, interoperability layer that was kind of, of course, born from the knowledge of these distributed ledgers. And, you know, again, you know, Burlington, we've also worked with uh, closely Stefan Thomas, CEO, founder of Coil, yeah, a he's G. someone who's really, really cherished and, and, and taken this, that vision of interoperability, you know, kind of all the way. But that notion where you needed both of those I'm things, goosebumps off some of it. fundamentally to work in a way where you're going to have an internet of value, and again, complete the picture where the, you have this grand network of networks of, of goods, data, and money all working together. That just fundamentally resonates, and I it's something that resonates, that. you know, in... 2015 in 2020 i think it will resonate in 2030 and just like the internet itself 20 years into it you know it's still a work in progress but it's made incredible changes in, in people's lives and i think that's what you're going to see with these distributed ledgers being the core part of, yes. of this internet of value so let's yes. talk a bit about xrp and the xrp ledger the distributed ledger that we built to hold the XRP digital asset. It also has a decentralized exchange, supports issued assets, doesn't have mining, confirmations are final. How do those technologies enable the internet of value? Yeah, first and foremost, it has to, these have to be fast, extremely inexpensive. They've got to be open to everybody. So it can't be this idea of private distributed ledgers. I just don't, I don't buy that. So uh, those are, those are key components. When it comes to payments, it has to be deterministic. It cannot be, history cannot be rewritten, rewritten by anybody, right? So that's, again, a problem with miners. The miners can rewrite history. So that's, uh, I think, why you probably won't see proof-of-work models uh, be the guts of, of the global financial system to take the place of SWIFT and correspondent banking, for example. Whereas I think XRP Ledger, as I think it's already obviously proving to be, can be that replacement to that existing inefficient system. So those are core things. But it come back to the energy thing, though, again, that is such a problem. And I just cannot imagine, you know, again, I think Bitcoin will, will remain a, a extremely valuable asset. It's going to be obviously part of the mix of where Yesterday. digital assets go. But I think for many uses, it's, it's going to become increasingly politically unacceptable to embrace technologies that are contributing that much CO2 
to a planet that cannot take anymore and needs to be going the other direction. And I think particularly with the new generation, when you start moving away from kind of the Silicon Valley technology, you know, kind of utopian folks, that becomes a much more unacceptable story when you have the Greta's involved and what we're all going to be needing to face up to over the next uh, decades. So I think that's just really, really fundamental. And, and that's something we're real proud of. I think in the XRP ledger, that it doesn't use meaningful amounts of electricity. And by the way, another side consequence of that is that there's proof of work systems, which they actually lead to more centralization, more control by miners. You know, again, Bitcoin's code uh, cannot be changed unless you get the miners to agree to it. And there's lots of conflicts where it wouldn't make sense, as we've seen what some of the forks uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem have happened. You know, that's a problem. And it's probably, and you know, look, we all have to face also that there is, a, there is a serious question about the mining groups being too weighted to China. And again, I think China's done a masterful job of positioning you know, their industry into those ecosystems, Bitcoin, Ethereum, for example, the proof of uh, work systems. But I think other countries, and particularly the US, would, would have to question is that, is that something that you want to build a global financial system on? I would say that that would be uh, quite risky, particularly as, unfortunately, I think those two economies are going to be moving into more and more of a competitive challenger, maybe even something a little bit more unfortunate posture. Uh, that, that looks like that's a very clear trend that we're going into. So those are, those are concerns as well. And you just don't have those concerns in consensus systems like the XRP ledger. So take us into a utopian future. If these technologies do deliver on their promise, what do we get? Oh, well, I think uh, first stop, is I, I break it into two areas. Our first stop, though, is that Internet of Value. When you complete the the third leg of the stool, and you know I can send that shirt for four cents, and I can communicate with anybody in the world on who wants to buy that shirt for four cents or whatever the markup is. But I can also collect the the value that four cents in a way that doesn't add ridiculous amounts of friction fees, and it, it, it isn't a way where I have too many gatekeepers just so I can get to Swift and that correspondent who otherwise aren't going to uh, work with me. So an internet of value, again, it's going to be an open decentralized system with accessibility to all and completing the picture, which now, you know, again, if you listen to the Gates, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they have calculated, you know, you know, people, those 2 billion people in the developing world, they need to be able to send value in as little as 50 cents in a way that's economical. And in today's world, that's just not possible. And that's why those billions of people are not being served by, by banks, whether they're local banks or international banks, is because the banks cannot serve that kind of a transaction profitably. And in an internet of value world, that's no longer the case. You know, there'll be like that, that shipping company that says, oh, great, yeah, we can, we can send that ship for four cent, or that shirt for four cents. I'll take that business. That's the kind of system you need, but that's all about dramatically lowering of the cost nearly to zero, you know, accessibility to all and in a way that, that operates, not in a way where it's, um, you know, kind of a series of bilateral agreements, which only the big guys can accomplish. But, you know, it's an internet structure where anybody can get to an on-ramp. So I know we're running out of time. You and I have been working together for eight or nine years now. Before we close, I think we should share either our favorite or least favorite, maybe memory from the early days of building Ripple. I'll tell you mine first, and then you can tell me yours. I've gone, I've gone to a lot of meetings in my life. There were a lot of meetings in the early days of Ripple about finding investment and explaining the technology to people. But there were only two meetings that I've ever gone to that I was nervous before. And this one was with a, with a computer security expert. I won't name him because, well, you'll see why a little later. I, I think I remember that meeting. You know what I'm going to say, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's a world famous computer security expert. And you have to remember, this is 2012. The technology had not been looked at by a very large number of people, and <laughs> certainly not by not you know, any world renowned security expert. And uh, this was new. We were doing things that people had never no, done before. And obviously, we thought it was going to work, and we thought that if there were any issues, we could fix them, but we didn't really know. And so I'm going into this meeting, and part of me is thinking, what if he finds a flaw that I can't fix? Like, what if he finds something fundamental that's wrong with this? And I basically just have to say to everybody, sorry, Chris, you know, I tried. Everybody, oh, well, this it, just isn't going to work. I mean, that was a very realistic... Who else? Like, shout off in the comments if, if that's not McAfee. 
if that's if he's not took that call to McAfee saying he's, he's deflaws in this security wise, who else is there to go to apart from the people who still run McAfee? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know people have got the, the their opinions on that software, and I don't have it on any of my systems if I can if I can help it. But who does he mean if not him? Sound off. We'll get back to. I'll try and get back to your questions and that. I've got that DTCC written down, Craig. Coming back. There's only four minutes left. Stick possibility. And so I was quite nervous. And he gets there and he has a two liter of Dr. Pepper, a second two liter as a spare in case he finished that one, and a giant box of taquitos from 7 Eleven. And oh, yeah. as we're going from whiteboard to whiteboard, drawing out every piece of the system, he is slamming these Dr. Peppers and taquitos. And uh, that meeting, unfortunately, he did not find any serious flaws in the system. But that, that was just an incredibly surreal experience to me. And I remember it just it taking a while before I started to realize. You like, need to tweet David Schwartz asking you that was. Somebody else who was very skeptical. That was when it really gelled in my mind. But he's not going to name him, though, didn't he? And his tweet really was worth something David. different than something that could really work. And that was kind of when I started to relax a little bit. Yeah, I remember that meeting very well. It was a Sunday afternoon. Uh, they went on for hours and hours. And the, the takeaway I had from that was... When David Schwartz is talking, just shut the hell up because, like, it's like, do not get in the way of these two guys. And you guys were just going at it, and it was awesome to see. But it was like, just stand back, you know, don't say a word, and you know, let's see how this all plays out. And that was that was a pretty cool outcome. You want to share your story? It could be most favorite or least favorite. Well, there's a lot of you know really favorite. Time. It was about long haul here, but uh, I, I have to say the, the the most delightful memory I have was uh, you remember when Marketa yeah, Marketa did is this credit card company and they did a credit card that allowed you to load XRP on it, right? So I don't know when this was. This is maybe twenty uh, tw uh, twenty fourteen or something, maybe. Uh -huh. And I just remember loading XRP onto this card. Going to the gas station and filling up my car with XRP. We think we do the coolest experience you know ever. It was just uh, it just by pecking with XRP. Really the only one was if you remember way back in the day. Remember you could you know again you could use the XRP ledger to create any kind of asset, right? And so there's this guy. I don't even know where he was. It was somewhere in the U.S. He created a currency uh, that was based on silver dimes, and it was just so awesome. Like you could you could go and trade anything you know euros gold you know any all these assets were existing and you could you could create you could trade it for this dime currency and then if you wanted you could settle and in the mail you get uh you get a roll of like pure silver dimes from the 60s that was just super cool i carried a roll of dime, those dimes around with me for a long time so that i could tell people this is a physical object that's in my hand because of blockchain and it was just this entrepreneur who just yeah. Okay, here's what you can do. I'm just going to build this thing, and there it is. So it was, that was pretty cool. Thank you, Chris, for joining me today. It was a wow. pleasure hosting you on Ripple's newest podcast, Block Stars. And listen, thank you for tuning in. That was awesome, that. That was um, awesome. I highly recommend people rewatch that later when you have a bit of time, when you haven't got me uh, pausing it and talking over it and whatnot. But, um,. Yeah, wow. So they met Yoshi Taka Katao in 2005, mate. Do you know what I mean? He's got issues with trustless Chris Larson in the way that it says, like, you don't need to trust your fellow human to use the blockchain. Whereas I, I personally saw him as he missed the point of the way I see it. I see it as trustless, as in you can just trust them because the system's providing the trust. Chris was saying it as if the trust isn't there anymore, but trustless to me is that my trust is dependent on the system. The system's like, yeah, you can trust this node, you can trust this validator, you can trust this trust line on Zoom. Do you know what I mean? Now, it, it's it, it's interesting that it's trustless. It's both about reserve currency and a group of new currencies that are not pegged to governments or anything. You know, we didn't even just talking about the one E they've created. He's talking about a group like we always have with a level playing field of globalization. We need other assets. But again, where are they? What are they? Are they as fast as XRP? Are they setting the same stand? Are they meeting the standard? Never mind setting it. XRP's already set it. Are they meeting the standard? The solving of problems from the current system to the future system. He's, he, he spoke about that. Vaguely, 
of speeding up Swift, making it so currency to currency cross borders can go faster. Oh, they're already doing that. They'll be there um, and a lot more further on by 2023 when the migration's complete. And then comes the future problems of an IOV. You've got to make sure it can continue to grow as the growth of value happens, as more smart contract platforms come out, as we just get more and more networks within the network of networks. You can see where all these buzzwords we've got We've started running with some of the stuff. We've got it all from Chris, basically. Corey Johnson started, when he when he joined Ripple, he started saying the same. It seemed like his, his, his job only lasted 12 months and then it was done. But if you was there, you noticed it and you picked a lot of it up. Mentioning attention, like we say, attention's the most valuable thing on the planet. If, if an item, asset or commodity hasn't got attention on it, then it's got no value. The attention on diamonds puts its value on diamonds. It's like it's, well, you know, it, it's it's corrupted value, basically. They shouldn't be worth what they're worth, but they are. Globalisation. We're saying the left is the right. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard to, um, it's hard to realise what's going on. And I truly believe they're doing it for the good. They're doing it for, for, for good reasons. I'm speaking about the billions of Africans, he speaks about him making a t-shirt that's only four cents and he wants to sell it and send it here and that, and he can't without the interoperability of IOB matching the interoperability of goods and data. Now, I mentioned at the beginning communist society to communist state and how it's slightly different and it was just a little bit of research I was doing the other year and I noticed that I didn't really look more into it. But I'm actually seeing the videos on, online now where people talk about it a little more. So let's just go. To communist state, meaning. So a communist state is a state that is administered and governed by a single communist party. So it's... it's when it's the state ideology of the Soviet Union, uh, for instance. Communist states are typically administered by a single centralised party apparatus, although some provide the impression of multiple political parties. They are solely in control by that centralised party. Like the Chinese guy has now just said he's going to rule till, till he dies or whatever. So that's communist state. If you then search a communist society... Come on, this phone is, is, is needs its screen fixing because it keeps it don't let me press certain buttons on. That's why I was having problems a minute ago. Communist society meaning. The communist society should be distinguished from the Western communists of the communist state, the latter referring to a state ruled by a party which professes a variation of Marxism. Um, blah, blah, blah. To, uh, communist society or a communist system is a type of society and economic system postulated to emerge from technological advances in the productive forces representing the ultimate goal of the political ideology of communism. A communist society is characterised by common ownership of the means of production with free access to the articles of consumption and, it's is, and is classless and stateless, implying the end of uh, ex uh, uh, exploitation of labour. My mouth. Communism is a specific stage of socio-economic development. Predicted upon us, uh, go and search him. Go and search him and, and, and see the difference in, in the economic aspects and the social aspects, because they are different. When you say communist, it, there's, two, there's two types of communism. <clears throat> State communism and social communism. It's, it's basically socialism. It's, it's supposed to be the next evolution in democracy. Which is when I say democracy through consensus is basically becoming a communist society where everyone decides and dictates the way everything is run. Is it not a world when is that not globalization fairly the way Chris Larson talks about it? It's actually a 
quite interesting. Craig DTCC, I did not see it. I did not see. Let me try and get some um, some grasp on the comments because. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah, morning, Gary. Morning, Ellen. Oh, in addition, no Gallagher. Nice, mad for it. 35 kex RP is great position, something like 12 x RP per person on the planet, so you're a good position. Yeah, exactly. I was saying this today, it's only like 13, 13 x RP per person. If if that, if if the 100 billion, people think there's loads of x RP, but if you was to distribute it between everybody, you'd only have 13 each. <clears throat> it's crazy. You're going to move to China, Carl? If you're rich, have a kid. Get the Made in China tag on it, you crazy bastard. This has been going since 2006, under two, 10 years. No, 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 Craig. The food, they met Yoshi Taka Katao in 2006. The, the vision of, um, of, a good, of a blockchain was there while Bitcoin was being built and all that, but it wasn't until after Bitcoin. It was like, let's make a better Bitcoin. And then that came more 2006. 11 12 as i say go back re-listen to it take your own little notes um get it all fixed in go and watch a globalization documentary that we made now it was more a film documentary film I had a bit of audio on it try to make it a little eerie because for some people it is a little scary and say globalization and that it, it's like ooh, a bit, bit scary this i mean talk see you take it as nothing but political it does look like you're heading for some new world order type dystopian future where we're all fucked and there's no one there to help us but then when chris larson steps on stage and you listen to the way he talks and you realize that there's clearly people on the planet that want to move the planet forward in a progressive manner for the good of humanity and not the good of themselves or their own family or their own bank balance it gives you a bit of hope man it really does it's where all, all my hope comes from is 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 Stuff like that. I watch globalization. If you want to ignore the first hour of it, mate, just ignore the first hour of the bullshit. But that's legitimately Trump and Christine Lagarde and Mark Carney and everyone else pretty much saying in code what's going to happen from that we're opening the doors to Christine Lagarde saying the town hall's, uh, the town centre and town hall's coming back, but it's going to be online. Well, what they used to do at the town hall, do you know what I mean? It's what I keep saying. Um, Democracy through consensus has has got to be a good thing if you break it down, and then as, the richer the world gets, the richer they get. If ILP and IOV starts to run itself and an automated system, they just put the feet up and continue to get rich. This is what the people who are like, well, are they going to just let that many people become millionaires? It's like, well, because you're still paying tax, bruh, and you still you still pumping the economy. You're still pumping their pockets and you're now doing it in a system that's, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty much self-automating and they've got their feet up getting richer and richer and richer. It's, um... What does it all mean, Bobby Malona? What does it all mean, mate? It's basically, go and watch, um... The documentary Kurt did, the master plan, then watch globalization, and um you should get it a little better, mate. Like one one side of the coin is a little bit scary, but like I say, the other side of the coin is full of hope. Full of hope, mate. Might have to whip and get a drink of water on and move screen dry. Nah, you don't really need, you don't need 35k XRP to make it, mate. People need what they need. You, right, you've... Do you know what you need to do? Instead of how much XRP do we need has been the first question. Your first question should be who am I? And what would I be who would I be if I didn't have money worries? If I didn't have the stress of bills and all that bullshit? You would have been what would I do, and then there's your there's your path of where you want to go, if you've got the means to go and do it. Fuck, forget your job. I'm not talking about oh Scott's an electrician. No, I'm not. I'm a fucking human being. Electrician's something they occasionally do to make money. Do you know what I mean? It's not your way out. 
decide who you actually are. are you a, I'm a creator, I'm a human, I, I like creating stuff. <clears throat> so when I've got the means to do it and no money stresses, I'm gonna go down that, down that road. The third question is what life do you want to live? What kind of house do you want? How much land do you want? What kind of life is the second question leading you to? And then the fourth question is how much does that life cost to be comfortable in it? And then the fifth question is what price does XRP have to be for you to have that value? Yeah, no one can answer that for you, me. No one can say 10,000 XRP at such and such a price is gonna be enough for you. No one can say 35,000 XRP at something such a price is, is enough for you. You've got to fucking sit down and think, who the fuck am I? Someone what <clears throat> someone walked in your house now with a million pound in a suitcase. Who would you go and be with that million? Who, who are you? Who, who, push, push your job aside. Push what everyone thinks you are aside. Who are you? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What kind of impact do you want to leave? What 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 kind of impact is this vessel going to leave on 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 this world? What what do you want to leave for your kids? What legacy do you want? What life do you want? And then work out how much that life costs. And you've got numbers, man. You've got numbers. You then have steps to get there that might have different numbers, which then become your different exit strategies. So you're like, right, well, to get there, I might need that, but it'd be nice if a couple of years before there, I could get into that kind of house. And then we start building that little business that I've always wanted to do. And then step two is go to there. And then step three and step 10, you're like end game, beat up, boom. And then your kids are running your business and you're, you're retired still earning. Do you know what I mean? You, you, people have really, really got to, got to think about what they're going to do with this. What what are you in it for? What what's it for? Exactly, Peter. How can you make an impact? Get get sustainable on your own. Get yourself right. No one needs to be in one of these big mansions, but if you can get yourself a good bit of land and you can start growing on it and you can sort yourself out and then turn your attention to other people you've always wanted to help. You might not want to help people necessarily. You might want to help animals. Go and build a sanctuary. Go and build a, a, a safari on the moors. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? It's... Carl, seriously, it just becomes a number in your bank at the end, I imagine, and you're chasing what your true passions are. There'll come a point where you get so rich... <clears throat> You're chasing your passions, um, which ain't a bad thing. But if you don't know who you truly are, then passions are just going to be bullshit hobbies that you're doing because other people do them. And in the end, it, there's going to be no true fulfillment for it. You you need fulfillment. You need you need yeah you, you need a drive and fulfillment in in your life. You really really do. I don't need to get into my forties fifties to know that, but I know if you get there. The more drive and fulfillment you, you get in the old, the longer you'll live, man. All these people going into their 80s with all this drive and still active and that, still healthy, they've got, it's because they've got drive and they've got goals and they're fulfilling, they're feeling fulfilled in the goals. Age will catch up eventually, don't get me wrong, but. Jerry God, I'm in the States, I love Pond, I love crypto here too, I appreciate it. People in the States don't elaborate, they just throw numbers on the guys. No problem, mate. I I I appreciate and value the messages I get. Uh, it means a lot to me when people send messages saying, love, I break it down and that in layman's terms. And I do agree, if you are a more technical person, there are many more people with, going into much more depth. I mean, we've been there, been down the documents, been down the rabbit holes. I've, I've got enough information needed. That's why when I hear Chris Larson, uh, Chris Larson in conversations like that, I can't help but just smile all the way through it because I now see I see the original vision and I have done for two years since we was first getting onto them documents. I don't need any more documents about how, how far, how further along it's regulated and that, but there are some great, great YouTubers throwing out some good, deep content. Um, Crypto Era and Kevin Cage and the likes of them are on it, on it. Right, there was that I wanted eco. 
So why do you think Gordon Brown sold the majority of our gold to China at a price cheaper than the dirt? Man? Maybe something to do with a new gold back there. I just think Gordon Brown was a rat mate and he lined his own pockets with a big fat brown envelope. Oh. You're gonna need to understand that the reason we came out of the EU is because our politicians were apparently and seemingly taking back handers for implementation of laws and sales of goods and the giving up of the fishing waters and all sorts. It's we had to get away from that, and it's the it's the reason you, you saw Brexit go down. See XRP in the basket with the other main five. Uh, open gates in that value. I XRP. I don't do not be surprised if XRP gets added to the SDR basket at the end of this year, and then we we'll start getting some sort of bull run next year because it'll have to be coming mainstream. Then and I don't mean like mainstream is going on BBC. I mean like next year's Davos meeting. If it gets put in the basket. The next year's Davos meeting and the World Economic Forum meetings and all the elites meetings, the World Bank meetings and the G7 meetings, all that shit, they're all going to have to start talking about XRP being in a basket. Or just a new currency being added to the XDR, a digital currency added to the XDR. I don't know. They've got to talk about it, aren't they? So it's extremely interesting to wait and see what happens with the SDR review at the end of this year. Extremely, extremely um interesting and exciting times man oh see russell that's great some people just want to be at home with a family man some people this is what breaks me out mate some people just had enough land to just be at home with a family growing their own food keeping themselves to themselves it's to, to sell a bit of food that they grow every, when they have to buy clothes or anything every now and then and they just live self-sustaining. If they simply, like, how many people would do that if they had the land to do it and they knew how? Do you know what I mean? It breaks me heart. But we're, lit, we're heading into a, a world of globalisation where it becomes possible through nothing but a smartphone and a few fucking blockchain wallets. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. It looks to be a guru, Steve. Go for it, mate. Go to go to the Tibet, Tibetan mountains. Like, give yourself up. Relinquish fucking attachment and shit. Um, go for it, mate. Yeah, you, you, your perspective life does change every decade, Rus Russell. Uh, I, I'd agree with that. Uh, five coins I mentioned the other day. What would they have been? Do you know what? I legitimately just pull pull projects. I feel I feel I have some in them. And it was likely, it was likely XRP. It was like the XRP, XLM, V Chain. I want to say chain link, but people in the comments might have said chain link. I just said um, XRP, XLM, V Chain. I might say casino coin, look at casino coin, we've got some of them. Um Carver, we've got some Carver. Um Chain Link, it was in the comments and we, we mentioned it a little bit. No, oh, Raymond, if you heard that, mate, that's answered your question. Southern Well Syndrome needs some thought. It really, really does, Steve. You see it in um, lottery winners. Does anyone remember that Roy Carroll? Excuse me, what about nine million and then just blew it doing destruction derby in his back garden, bought a big house, bought a load of cars and just started smashing the cars into each other like wasted all his money like an absolute idiot. Morning Julian. Sorry if I'm late with these comments, can't you see the date of them? We're on a bright one today. We're looking like it's gonna be it's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. <laughs> Oh, no, you only remember XRP, we are Alan, we all, all, that's all we all ever remember, mate. That's all we all, all we all. And what's saying up there? 
We've done streams on the Southern Well Syndrome Bill, do more when price starts go up. It's 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 bad news that shit when people just get the well. I've heard, I've seen a story me with people who won like the Euro millions moved to um Monte Carlo where the F1 is and got shunned by all the millionaires because they've not earned it. Do you know what I mean? It was it was mad. They went, they legitimately went out and started telling people they won the money and they instantly got shunned, whereas if they'd have walked in and give some sort of blag that they'd earned it all in Forex, they'd have probably got the um, got the red carpet treatment. Madness. Madness. It's like that the other side don't like it when you've just won it easily. Um it's an interesting one. Build your alligator farm. What? Get your hand bitten off. <laughs> Mate, Oliver, you'll be devastated at first, but in the end, it's going to be like 2035, and you're going to get a bionic arm fitted. You're going to end up with bionic arm from your elbow onwards, and you're going to be devastated at first, but then you realise that technology's come that way, you can still feel, and your arm's actually better than it's ever been, and no one wants to punch off you anymore, bruh. <laughs> Look at VeChain, defo, because like I say, it's, it's an active project. It's being used in China. You can go on China and see it tracking. Now, there's people asking questions, where does the currency come in and all that? And no one really understands how you're going to add value to a smart contract in the end. Like, can you, can you, like on the XRPL, can you attach XRP to a smart contract and send not only a contract, but value at the same time? And if so, is that what you can do on VeChain? Is, 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 Bet paying the coin is bet paying the fees. Is it doing this? Is it doing that? Just go and have a look at it, see what the coin's all about, and just don't sleep on it. Just don't not look at it. Just at least go and look at it. You don't have to buy it. I'm not telling you to buy V Chain. I'm telling you to go and look at V Chain, like see what you think of it. When you have money, you don't need to be an ass. You just need to be a person or a good person, mate. Because there's too many billionaires, man. I don't think anyone should be a billionaire. If I've ever got a billion in my bank, personally, not like a company having it and then redistributing it into new projects and new investments and helping and making an impact. But me personally, Scott Pratt, if I've ever got a billion in my pound, in my bank, just, just come and kick fuck out of me, please. Because I'd need, I need a, you need a wake up call and you've got a billion in your bank. That's JK Rowling, it, it seems to disgust her. She don't like it because when she goes over a billion, she gives hundreds of millions to charity. So she's no longer a billionaire. Like she doesn't want to be a billionaire. She became the first billionaire author and then instantly give a shitload of it away to charity. So, so she didn't have that fucking title. So I just don't want it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's that kind of people. Like, okay, she's sat on hundreds of millions, but she could have been sat on two or three billion if she didn't give a shitload away to charity. There's, there's, there's a way to do things and there's a way to get rich and comfortable and to be able to... See, some people might say, you only, I mean, come on, if you had 50 million, that's legit. You only need 50 million, that's legit. Like, yeah, it is, bruh. But I've got five kids, and I want to leave them 50 million each, so shut the fuck up and let me grow to 400 mil. Then I'll start helping more people, but I want to leave generational wealth to my kids and my grandkids and the great-grandkids, and I want them to remember what I was able to do for them because I was on it. I was fucking on it during the digital revolution and I provided this for them. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's ways of doing things, guys, and if people are jealous of it, I've got a problem with it, just break it down and say, listen, man, doing it for my family. Fuck oh, off. <laughs> like, can't wait. Can't wait to um, be able to help Seb out and just teach him to be the person he actually just wants to be and not be a fucking cog in the machine. At least, least... Show him how to have his own machine inside the machine. Can he wait, mate? We talked about Zill. Can you send JK Rowling the bank details, Carl's? Go and get her on Twitter. Say some, could buy some Carl coin. Fuck Bitcoin. Get some Carl coin. Sort you right out, you'll know. Hey, you're going to love what you can spend it on. <laughs> Stop. Don't, don't be naughty. It was a joke. Don't start getting naughty in the comments. Not surf around the world. All the most humble people on the planet. It's beautiful. Song. Oh, got it, mate. Love that. Fucking love that, mate. 
CEOs get paid for hundreds of times, the average worker is just not right. And if the governments aren't forcing the corporations to change that, what do we need? And I'm telling you now, I don't know, people don't like it, but that is the communist society. It's democracy through consensus, where the whole country says, listen, dickhead, you need to change what you're fucking doing. Listen, BP, I'm sick of your nine billion a year profit. Tesco, Amazon, Walmart, all of them, all of them were sick of you taking the piss, banking bonuses while you tell a staff have got fuck all, and then they get fucked off for a robot. Nah, bruh, nah, bruh. You're fucking paying them an, a healthy redundancy. Democracy through consensus, we need to force it on the next generation. We need to wake some of the next generation up so they become the politician that's going to change this. Folks, oh, Scott, 2030, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try, but imagine like Nigel Farage, you're going to end up just the wake-up man who most people hate because the, the mainstream media are going to attack you like fuck. The mainstream media are going to make people believe that they still need to be ruled like they are now that democracy through consensus will never work. They'll be scared of losing. Scared of losing the consensus and then how long until they can reapply for a referendum through consensus. <clears throat> a lot of grey areas. Again, you, you're looking at 20, 30 years before it's even set up. But it needs to be... Um, it needs to be looked at at the moment and it needs to be told to the next generation that democracy was set up for everyone to have a voice and we've just lost that voice. We need to try and get it back. Laws are written for us. Um, laws are put over us, not written for us. They're just put over us. Boom, have that law. You've got that law. Oh, that's a new law. I passed it today. There's another law. There's another law. We changed that law. We did that law. You're like, what? Nah, man. Start asking me. You need to start asking us if you if we if you can change the law, who's who's retracting and deleting messages, leave them all up. I want to see them all. Oh, a bit off topic, mate. Watched Alien Cold, want to see twice. I had to get my mind around some of it. Mate, watch it two or three times. It's easier, like I say, if you imagine oh mate, it's it's the the the, um, the box, the reactor. Like I was saying the other day, are we, yesterday, are we trying to find a way to come back and forth? Are we creating a blockchain that a human will become a machine and he'll tap to the blockchain and he'll find a way to bounce back to the absolute and come back and forth downloading memories in the absolute, uh, the uh, Ashaki records, whatever they are, and then bounce back still remembering who he is for a new journey and be an immortal vessel, choosing as and when you go back, bouncing from sleeve to sleeve like altered carbon. Is that... is? Is, is that what we're going to? Because in that film, that generator is to build a machine for them interdimensional beings to come and stay. They can come and they can view and they can do all that shit that they're already doing, but they can't stay for good for some reason without building a machine. In the end, you pull this guy, he's going to fuck shit up, pull him out of time, <sighs> send him back in time through, the, through a wind mate. That is quantum mechanics all, and quantum realm in it, all that. DMT realms a lot. It's, um, the schools won't teach. They won't teach. They won't teach economics. They won't teach money. They won't teach politics. But they'll let you leave school, get a bank account, and, and vote straight away. We'll get a loan within a couple of years of leaving school. Flipping net now it's academies. You'll leave at eighteen, won't you? Just get a bank account straight away. Just get a credit card. Right. Here. Just get once you've got a mobile phone, once you've been given a phone and you've actually got credit, you'll start being able to get other credit and you just, you just got credit being thrown at you and you don't really understand that you're being given money you don't have. That, that, you shouldn't be given money you don't have. It's different when there's an asset involved and you can take the asset back, like a phone, a house, a car. We spoke about this the other day. But um, it's going to be interesting to see where the lending goes, how credit changes and stuff. If we all made a goal, let me read that bad boy. If we all made a good return, become a new 1%. We should all work together to use that world to try to change things. I think this is going to create a 2% at first. Until that 2%, if any of them, and the remit, the, the current 1%, or it will make a 1%. Like the 1%'s got the wealth and the 0.1% of the, of the elites. Well, the 2% will be the new wealth. Because make no mistake, don't, don't, let's not act like... Well, there's, there's going to be a new 1%. Like the current 1% aren't smart enough to be on this. 
aren't smart enough to have a little hand in it to have more I mean, come on i'm not going to sit here and act like i've got more than more than some of the richest people in the world let's not let's not go there because i'm telling you now the day it kicks off if it kicks off in a way some people imagine and it's going to go like that and it hits a dollar and a few people start fomoing in and they actually want it to run they can just throw billions in at a dollar make no mistake they don't need 25 cents when they've been raping it for two years catching the catching the scouts they've been manipulating it to make off it anyway don't they'll, they'll just throw a billion and they'll have more than you just throw in a few hundred grand in two dollars mate just like that bam talk about some of the richest people in the world they ain't gonna miss the boat bro they're, they're gonna turn up last minute on a fucking chopper to just land on deck do you know what i mean like legitimately it's um but we are it is gonna create a new band of wealth below there like like the internet created a new band of richest people in the world, no doubt blockchain will, and some of them will get into the one percent, no doubt about that. Chris Larson being one of them, he's, he's gonna he'll catch Jeff Bezos, and uh, one of them too is likely gonna end up. Um, Jed McKayley could could end up one of them with the amount he's gonna have with XLM as well. But someone's gonna end up with the world's first trillionaire. So interesting to see with Jeff Bezos if he actually wants. To be the world's first trillionaire looking at chris larson and brad garland how's the value they attain during it just going to free eight to. you can imagine he's sat on the fence waiting to get some if he hasn't got some already love for people love for life mate new class of millionaires unite to invest in the change in the world <sighs> love that vision mate love that We, we, Craig, it's 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 going to be um, pretty, pretty good what's going to be possible. But like I say, people's going to have to look after the self first, remove money stresses, get in a life that you wanted, life that you're comfortable with. You can get a little bit of harmony in, in, in your mentality and you're happy every fucking day you wake up. You can then start spreading that happiness. It's, 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 it's hard to help people when you've still got to help yourself a little bit. Do you know what I mean? It's not easy, man. Once you, once you get to a point where you're fucking sweet, top of the hill, and you can start throwing a rope down over people and help them, help pull them up. Buzzing, mate. Buzzing. Pull me up and I'll give you an hand. No danger. Exactly, Gaddy. Everyone has to take care of their own shit and be responsible for your own actions. But you get to the top of the hill, mate. Pull, turn around and see who you can help get there as well. If it blows up, get a tattoo of the the trio. Get it on your on your pet there, like, like above your heart, above your heart. <laughs> studying management. Um, see, if you study management, I've got a thing about that. If you study management, depending on where you're studying it, you're gonna get told how the machine wants you to manage and how the machine thinks you should manage, and it's not necessarily the way to manage. You wouldn't do a managing course with Google fucking Chinese factory, would you? you know, like, they need to get away from They need to, like, that's another thing, consensus. Fucking stop it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's hard on one hand to get, how do you do that to someone when you want to get rid of war as well? How can you say to a whole country and government, like, get in line, get in line with this. The rest of the world wants you on board, wants you a democracy, wants you in, in the new, in the new, the new the new world globalization it's got to be fair your people deserve it to be fair how do you how do you get everyone to agree it's going to take decades mate decades unless they bomb the shit out of them but yeah studying management i would do a management course and study management and then i'd instantly flip it to the way that you want to manage your your passions, your hobbies, your your business, your revenue. Da -dum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Remove that, remove stress, sit back and meditate for three months, think about where you've come from. Love that Pablo. Love it, mate. I'm gonna go on a little I'm gonna travel a little bit, mate. I'm gonna document the traveling for the Love for Media channel as well. 
going to do documentaries of uh, visiting tem temples, probably going to do it for a couple of months, and I'm 100% going to do it. When I get back to the UK then, I'm going to full steam ahead against another on another project. But yeah, what I do some, what I do a little bit of travelling and do a documentary on it, hundred percent. Exactly, mate. People need to stop seeing colour and just start seeing actions. Treat people how you want to be treated, but also treat them how you feel they deserve to be treated. If they're doing something you wouldn't do. Do you know what I mean? It's all like, like treat everyone how you want to be treated and all that. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, yeah, what being a man of peace and all that. It's cool. I'm not into violence and all that. It's cool. What do you do when someone like comes through your house and starts attacking you? You, you kick the fuck out of them, man. You become a soldier of peace then. And you you, you you shut that motherfucker up, put him to sleep, peacefully, if possible. It's the old iron, in it? I've seen like... Um, I seen a thing online the other day. Uh, someone's Facebook's been hammered in Jordan because someone robbed the, uh, the van, popped the van, got in, got seen, was chased away, and he's left his phone and wallet in the van. It's got his driving license in it. So the guy's got in his phone, got on his Facebook, started absolutely annihilating him, calling him a crackhead burglar and all that shit, which is burglar. I don't know if it's a crackhead. But um, I'm looking in the comments. And they're after him, they're on him, and then someone's in Derby, she's like, oh, this is how I'd do it down here. And someone had broken into somewhere and he killed him. This old guy, he robbed a van, he chased him, battered him, and then the next day, he's dead. So they, they, they don't know if they killed him, they've been charged with manslaughter. Um, but, dead. Now, burglary is naughty, it's dirty, innit? You don't want someone coming in your house to burgle something. But then... If you think like, oh, the guy was desperate though, he just wanted you tell her to sell, get some money and maybe feed his kids and that. Maybe not a crackhead. Nah, fucking dirty crackhead and all that. All right then, well, what if it was your fucking cousin, your son? You know what I mean? Like the people you're supposed to love unconditionally, what kind of justice do they deserve? Do they deserve death on someone's living room floor or something like that? It's, and it just had me thinking, I'm like, right, how, do you, how are you supposed to react when... People, when you want to be a good person, you want to walk the righteous line and all that, and you're out for justice and a soldier of peace and blah, 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 whatever. How are you supposed to react to someone doing something like that? And I don't think it's not violence, mate. As angry as you might be, it's not violence. So they're just stealing off you. Not, not, not. It might seem that they're at work, If someone's upstairs in your gaff, in your bedroom, in your kids' rooms, and like it's a different floor and your first inkling to just go BAM! Do you know what I mean? He's put on it, what the fuck are you doing in here, bruh? Do you know what I mean? But again, it's like, what is true justice and all that shit? What would um, the consensus be? Interesting shit. Again, democracy through consensus. Or, or what, what can you justifiably do to someone found in your house? How many people would say, fucking kill him? And then how many of them people would then turn around to the kids and say, listen, I've just voted for anyone robbing someone's house that they can be killed. So don't rob anyone's fucking house, because I'll have to stand by that if you're ever robbing an house and everyone wants to kill you. Do you know what I mean? It's a... It's a... Study money management before the riches arrive. Yeah, definitely. Study... Was that a wasp? Get out of here, you had a little armoured dickhead. Don't like wasps. Like bees. I'll chill with a bee. I ain't chilling with no wasp. The world's connected by seven people. You've got connections to anyone by seven people, you know, apparently. It's quite interesting that. And I believe you easily have when when you when you break it down. But it's mind blowing when when you try and get it to some nobody in, in India or the nobody in India gets it to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, actually, has a connection to you. Never mind the Queen. The Queen's easy. Anyone, like, loads of people have met the Queen and you likely know someone who knows someone who's met the Queen. The President, Prime Minister. Do you know what I mean? They're the easy people. It's then it going, the, it's going to someone like that and then someone, nobody over here within six or seven people. Love for bees. Manchester bees, mate. We got them on the roofs. Mind having, like, putting a, a, a bee's nest in a tree or something, but I wouldn't know how to do it. 
wouldn't mind putting one up in the tree, you know, and see if they start coming to it and using it. Might have a look at that, actually. Say them sniffing around the house every year, because they're always sniffing around the house trying to find a place to put a hive and a nest. <clears throat> oh, look at that comment. Should the Chinese government be able to count? Are you shouting there, mate? Or oh, you just got a caps lock on by accident? Should the Chinese government... Should the Chinese government be able to count about criminal biological terrorist organisation considering they're stacking in amount of information to hear about the COVID-19 virus? You what, mate? Oh, yeah, what are you going on? I, I don't know, mate. I don't, I don't know. What virus? I've not seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, mate. Flu. Follow. Yeah, don't let it control if the intentions are genuine. It's all about me. Like, that's, I try and be as genuine as I can, guys. I just like not, not try not to sugarcoat anything. Not going to lie about anything. Just We're just being real and genuine. It's all you can be. Just just be honest and real. It's like you'll you'll get happier. You will. You scare some people at first, I think, but it will lead to happiness being yourself and just being real in front of everyone. They can't handle you. It's their problem. Do you know what I mean? You're not, you're not, not asking everyone to like you. Asking them to accept who you are, accept your opinions, and if you don't like them, then don't don't have to deal with them, bruh. Like not forcing them on you. Appreciate that, Gary. Much love, mate. I'm getting warm in this summer house. Oh, shed with windows. <laughs> oh, my days. I'm going to get some brekkie soon. Um, just speaking to a mate recently, we're saying he doesn't want such paper money again. See what I mean, mate? Like, I was saying to my mum the other day, you know people now who will never shake your hand again. It's very, very likely that you know people never gonna shake your hand again like that's crazy mate crazy see what battery we're on 57 percent we'll just go out there with a bit of shade for a minute but it's fucking red up i can't believe how much it's uh the world's changed sacrifice a bit of freedom and all that stuff it's it's quite mad and i understand some are scared but there's it doesn't seem like it was any any anything more to be afraid of than the flu. Like I say, is someone showing me the flu numbers? Are they, are they the normal expected numbers on top of COVID? Like, COVID numbers are mixed numbers, if you ask me, but I'm no expert, so... It's, it's what it is, mad. I just try not to think about it, mate. Just hope the world gets back to some form of normality as soon as humanly possible, really. That's uh, that's what needs to happen. Because I need to do my CSES test. So for anyone not in the UK, we have a um, construction certification scam right, in the construction industry. They call it a scheme, but it's a scam. It's just a money-making scam. They're charging money for a card that you have to renew, even though the information and knowledge has remained the same. It's just sucking money out of the system. Another thing that would probably change if we did a bit of democracy through consensus, all them government agencies that are apparently trying to keep us all safe when they're just raping money off us can get fucked kept no one in that fucking flats down there safe did they the horrible bastards when he was building that no cutting corners and shit while they're raping us you got umbrella companies taking money off off the self-employed lads and that nah needs to change mate needs to change peace bob if you're out mate take care take care pal wishing health and happiness to you and yours mate stay safe I'm gonna go as well, myself. Digital world, Rayman. It's coming. It's coming, yo. And I believe, long term, it can truly help human humanity. Globalization. That's what the documentary's about. The first half of it's about all the old, old, old. It seems all doomy and gloomy as with the TikTok and all that stuff. It was. It's not for everyone. But um, if you fast forward that little bit, if you're not into it, just watch the last hour of of. Everyone from Ryan Zagone explaining it to David Swartz talking about it to Chris Larson and Corey Johnson showing the globalization and level playing field for all. Clearly, with um, a lot of Africans, Asians, everyone in mind who are underbanked or unbanked. It's unbelievable. That conversation with Larson 
Um, I'm gonna re-listen to it, I think, because it was it was a, it was nice to listen to 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 get that information again for someone to actually come out and be talking about that stuff again. It's like I'm getting sick. When you were now, do you see what I mean? Now, when you hear that, all that two years ago, and you make a documentary full of it, and you put it online, and then you, we all watched it together back in the day, and we carried on and carried on and. They're still only talking about remittance and cross-border payments. And it's like, well, when are you going to start talking about what we know you want to talk about? The internet of value and swapping anything of value and globalization for all. He says it, not my words, their words, not mine. Globalization for all. Seriously, at globalization level playing field, I was proud of that. I'm single dad. Baby woke up, just missed about 20 minutes, and now you know, i go. I'll have to rewind. Yeah, if, if you want to, I'll link, otherwise it'll uh, start processing on you, and you'll have to wait to watch it. Um, Oliver Gassave Register, you know the dance, mate? It's an absolute joke. An absolute joke. Do you know the ECS cards? You get given like a labourer's card and you only have to change that like every four years. And the more qualified you are, the more often you have to change your card. Are you taking a piss? Like, why do I have to check? A MUP, does anyone know what a MUP is? Mobile elevated working platform. A MUP, a scissor lift, one of them metal things that goes up and down, right? You have to redo the license for that every four to five years. It's got fucking three or four buttons on it, mate. Turn the wheels, go up and down, switch from drive to lift. Drive, drive lift or er, er, up down it's got limited buttons every four or five years redo the test though redo the test but your driving license we've got people on the road 78 years old who did the license decades before i was born mate i was that rider they've not had to redo that none of them have done a theory it only came out in 1996 none of them have done the fucking hazard awareness i didn't even do the hazard awareness back in 2001 do you know what i mean so where, where, where are all them getting accountable, held accountable for doing new licenses? Especially when you see, I've got nothing against old people driving. If you're a good driver, go for it, mate. But when you're crashing into people and possibly killing someone, you've got a bit of a problem with that. Do you have a country or continent you want to migrate to when the money arises? I would like to have a house, if sustainable, um, a house and project in the UK, helping people. A house and project in Spain helping people. And that's helping people from collaboration on projects from animations to actual charity work for homeless and, and kids and animals and we're out in helping any way we can. And one in Canada. So a house and house and um, complex to help people in Canada, one in the UK and one in Spain, if it becomes possible and sustainable. Obviously the one in the UK will be built first. Um even if it's just a little retreat for people to go at affordable costs where they can do yoga, Tai Chi, chill with a Buddhist, do whatever they want. Do you know what I mean? Anything like that. Um, as well as, like, say, a little bit of an animal sanctuary up there for, for people who are just stuck in, in animal shelters and have got are not finding a home, basically. We'll give them a nice, big, loving home. Maybe hire a few people to look after the animals and show them love every day. Do you know what I mean? It's something like that. Loads of shit. In multiple countries, but yeah, mainly England, Spain, and Canada that I'm looking at first. USA rejected me for a, the holiday to LA, mate. Like, luckily, if if if, we, if LA had gone away, I wouldn't have been able to go. If it had gone ahead, so to say, if DLT con in LA had gone ahead, I wouldn't have been able to go. So I'll have to wait till we're actually rich before we're allowed in America for some reason. You only know, let rich people in when, when you've been caught. It's all right for Russell Brand, the next crackhead, to go over, but because Scott Pratt smokes a bit of cannabis, we're not letting him in. Fucking dicks. <laughs> Sorry to call your government weapons, but they are the dangerous man. And they need to um, need to be accountable. Uh, the American people and the, the, the people around the globe should be um, should be making the fucking rules. I'd love to come, Oliver. We've been there once for two hours. We got told to fuck off. And then they had, had well, not that big. Come on, you've seen me record on that live. It's only that big, but they had. They got all that from Scotland Yard, or what was there at the time. Made an inla uh, made a Homeland Security record on me. Took me prints, took me DNA, took me picture, took a lot, mate. And then it was like, get back to Canada. Go over the bridge, bro. Back over the bridge, lad. Go on. 
walked over for if you're wondering i was in niagara i walked over the bridge into buffalo new york new york state buffalo um and yeah just got rejected mate so then we did the um the visa and i actually still went to apply for the visa during lockdown just in case it stopped but yeah i found out it was about a week well a couple of weeks ago that i'd been rejected just I'm what it's already cancelled bro <laughs> didn't bother me then luckily but might have been a bit wounded but I'd have still done it I'd have done what Beats Fingers planning to do you know a live webinar from his house or labs you have to have 500,000 to invest in a business to get around a criminal record I think might be wrong 500 grand 500,000 dollars it's only about 300 grand 9 pounds as well 312 not stupid or I might just way off on the current Forex exchange. <laughs> That's what I hate about the Forex exchange. You never really know what actual price it is. You know, them stable coins. You never really know how much they've moved. <laughs> the stable. I'm warm in here, mate. You need to go get some breakfast. Oh, morning, Daniel. Wait, just coming in, Vlad. Just coming in. I'm sweating my back out in here, it's proper, proper warm. Can you wrench this a couple? Can you what, what? What's that, what, what? What's wrench? What do you mean, boo? What do you mean? I've been to Canada. Lived there 13 years, married a Canadian. Canada is an awesome place. I don't care what anyone says, mate. I went to... Oh, Modjo, sorry. I went to... Burlington, Ontario. Me, I got... Me auntie lives out there and that. Visited Toronto. Went up the... Is it the CNR or CNN? CNR Tower, the big concrete tower that fucking me. It's like, ah, oh, Jesus, wet me. That was crazy, that. Went up there, went to Niagara, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Walked over to the USA, got rejected, back to Canada. Had an absolutely lovely time in Canada. I've seen Banff online. Banff. If no one's seen Banff, get on Google and put B-A-N-F-F, -F, Canada. Banff. Looks like Zeus lives there or something. It's like Zeus's little, like Zeus is living on top of a fucking mountain. And you got like a little, a little beautiful looking little town below him. It's, it looks absolutely amazing. It's like Olympus on Earth. <laughs> Banff it is nice, mate. It's absolutely beautiful. Later's Craig. Take care, pal. Quebec City is 400 years old. Like nice, 400. It's, it's nice to have a lot, a lot of history over there, innit? There's not too much. I know there is a lot of history, there's not so much recorded history as far as I'm aware. If there is, send it to me, I want to read it. Doing some research recently on the Native American tribes, um, <clears throat> as well as Polynesian for the uh, for the world building. Um, Africans as well, like some of the way them, them ancient tribes fought, mate. Well, people like to talk about how, how badass the Spartans were, but don't really like to talk about how badass the fucking Zulu or Apache were. Do you know what I mean? Like Zulu, I know we've got the film and all that, and a few people are aware, but... Some warriors then, man. Some warriors then. I am good, thanks, John. Pleasure to see you in the chat. Um, but yeah, the Apache. And... Um, I don't want to butcher too many names, so I'm not going to try and try and remember how to pronounce them when I actually don't know. Uh, I know one began with K, Kyoke, something like that tribe. I don't want to disrespect anyone who's a member of the, the, the his ancestors within that tribe, right? And I've butchered the name. I'm just saying your ancestors were some badass people. It's a fucking shame we haven't got more history of them, uh, more footage of them, and more of it still about. Very, very spiritual people. So yeah, John, at the start of this, we went over Chris Larson, has been on Block Stars. I highly, highly recommend everyone go and watch it because it's everything that we need the mainstream to start talking about. Reserve currency, interoperability, internet of value, 
globalization for all it, it all all touched on very very vaguely in that chat i mean if you want a refresh of it all or if you haven't seen it check out the globalization documentary on our channel globalization a level playing field that's got it all in the back end of it it's where we're heading i can't wait till the mainstream starts talking about that stuff and again like i say we need to wait for the imf that's basically all i'm waiting for this year is to see is, is to see what happens with the SDR basket of the IMF after they review it towards the back end of the year. I think that's massive. I might be wrong. Very, very easily could be wrong. Um, XRP isn't added. Um, but I really, really do think it will be because it's as far as I'm aware, it's another five years then, 2025. And I think that's when the other either CBDCs or will be, will be, will be either like exchanging it along the way from fiat to CBDC fiat. Um, or by 2025 when there's a next review they'll pull all the fiat out of the basket and replace them with other digital tokens that meet the standard set in the previous five years by xrp it's spent 10 years proving it works and it's now gonna spend five years or it's spent eight to ten you know it's gonna have spent 10 by 2023 during that time it's gonna have it's possibly it might spend five years in the imf basket what percentage would it have then? Do you know what I mean? It's because it can continue to accumulate then. That gives central banks the power to pull XRP in as an official SDR, XDR reserve like they have been the Chinese run in Europe. So they've been pulling in more Chinese um, money than they have dollars in recent years. <clears throat> Let me actually see what they've been doing with that because of what just before they go. We'll have a little look at it. Oh, yeah, 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 I knew it was. It was from two thousand and eight, and you've seen it somewhere. Europe central banks are starting to replace the dollar reserves with the yuan. So that was that happening, been happening, happened 2018. Oh, what are you doing, for? Europe central banks are starting to replace. So last year, China said it was time for the nation to take center stage in the world. Or many ways for trying to do this, including promotion. Do you know what, right? I read that a bit too quick for myself. And last year, it was time for the nation to take centre stage in the world. There are many ways for China to do this, including promoting globalisation and boosting foreign aid. So promoting globalisation. So if China's promoting globalisation and globalisation through DLT is, in my head, has to lead to democracy through consensus how does the i would like to say how does, how does you get china involved in that is china ready to change the way it's working is, is, is the world ready to like legitimately change the way it works or would, is david Icke right we're all just going to be digitally enslaved <laughs> do you know what i mean it's, it's a weird one you listen to chris larson you've got to believe and, and david schwartz as well you've got to believe there's people on the side of humanity that want um that want to do this for the good of the world and the good of the people um, but the reserve status of the yuan has only grown in the five years since it's been in the um in the reserve the eagle you want it you want I didn't see that there then there's an infograph from somewhere the sources at last data imf so the source directly from the imf um shared share of allocated foreign exchange reserves us dollar at the top the euro the yen the pound the canadian dollar australian dollar chinese yen, the swiss franc down the side there you can see the percentage of the us dollar right it's in the 60s i said the other day the, it used to be in the 60s it's pulled down um i'm pretty sure when it currently in the 40s when we looked the other day current reserve currency allotment is that what it is current, current reserve currencies um, baby, baby, baby. we need to get the current the current
current numbers. Because I'm sure... I'm sure it's changed dramatically from that. Fucking hell, I can't get that up now. Two hundred and four billion XDRs. The basket of value. Blah, blah, blah. During the last review, concluded in November two thousand and fifteen. Ways determined in the two thousand and fifteen review: fixed number of units coming to a five years period starting October the first. US dollar forty one percent, thirty percent of the euro. It just shows the difference over five years. I like. I mean, that was two. That was then the dollar pumping up actually from twenty fifteen to twenty eighteen to sixty three, and it's fucking come down again because I know the Chinese yuan is approaching the euro, and the euro was on thirty percent then, while the yuan's only on ten, and now they've gone more bump bump. But you'd have to. So it's the IMF actual actual site and that to get the to get the current current um numbers. 49 cent battery. I think it was the Wi-Fi me bounced on Wi-Fi, didn't it? And it goes on the Wi-Fi. We got it's it's off it for now. But it must have it must have gone on Wi-Fi. But um I'm gonna go and get a drink, guys. But Share that Chris Larson thing about. I mean, we can try and go on David Schwartz Twitter and get him to reveal who that security engineer was, but I'm pretty sure with David saying he's not going to reveal who he is, he's not going to reveal who he is. True to his word, David. So you'll do you'll do well to get that out of him. But I'm extremely interesting to interested to know who that was. I'm gonna um, listen to it again. Um, I say I recommend you do without me stopping it and that. Take it all in. Take what he said in. How long the project's been actually going. The fact that these guys did actually have the vision of the internet of value. Oliver, right, during the... If you want in in the beginning, mate, during the Chris Larson talk, he talk, uh, David Schwartz, right at the end, talks about a story of when they went to see a guy about 2011, 2012, when he was writing the, um, the code for the XRP ledger and XRP, and they wanted to make sure... From a computer secure, uh, from a computer security expert's perspective, that it was solid, that it would, that it works, that there was no flaws in it. So they took it to someone, an expert in in computer security, nine years ago, mate. So we, who, if not, not McAfee, who, who, who did he mean? Do you know what I mean? Like who did he mean? Who did he mean? <laughs> who did he mean? I need to know. I need to know who he meant. You should put the kettle on next stream. You've got to tell everyone you're streaming from Sweden out the soda. Do you know what? I actually want another brew, but I'm not a fan of drinking brews while I've got a cheeky little sweat on, mate. I'm, I'm getting warm in here now, bruh. No joke. That sun there. Tanning sun that today. You can get, if you've got the time today, midday, just sit in the garden for a couple of hours. 90 minutes on the front, 90 minutes on the back. You've got to tan, mate. 100%. Fucking hell, Carl. It is, in it? New World Order Bill Gates. I mean, he talks a good game, don't know, when he's on the cameras, unless he slips up and says they're going to increase death. You know, like that interview where he says they're going to increase death. He, he, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to say we want to reduce death. But he says increase fucking death in the population. It's like, you, was that an actual mix-up in words, Bill? Or is that what you want? And reducing deaths just to black? Like, it's it's not... It, it, go either way, can't we? It, it, yeah, it, it, 
he seems to talk a good game him and then he's he's a bit of a bit of a dark horse on the on the side of darkness him. Mate, serious Manchester today. Sunny That sky, mate. Look at that sky. We've got planes flying. Thought, thought, did, how many planes are flying? You've got what, what, people going back on holiday now. Because there's fucking plane tracks up there, bro. Yeah, there's something not right. I'm, right. What I said before about billionaires and come around and, and get fuck out me if I've ever got a billion in my personal account. Not if my company's worth a billion. I think a, a corporation that wants to make a global difference. There's there's seven and a half billion people in the world. You're going to need a few billion to make a global difference. But if BP wanted to make a global difference, where the fuck is it? They've been earning five to ten billion for the last few decades. Where... Where's the change, the good? All they do is pollute seas every now and then and make trillions of dollars in the long run. It's like, where Jeff Bezos, where's where's the good? Where All these billionaires, where's the good? Where? Oh, they clearly aren't doing it, so they don't deserve it. There comes a time when they're just like, listen, what are you doing with all that value? Do something good. Do something. Might make a positive impact on the world and, and environment. And the way in the direction of humanity. Like Elon Musk, love him or hate him, say he's part of the problem or whatever, but the guys try to get people space holidays and all that. Do you see NASA doing that? Do you see NASA try to get people to go in orbit around around the Earth or possibly colonizing another another planet just in case we fuck this one up because it looks like we're gonna. Do you know what I mean? It's people Certain people, when you've got a certain vision and you want to change the world a certain way, you're going to need a few billion, maybe even a trillion. But no one person in his own fucking personal bank account needs a billion. So these Bill Gates and all these people who are trying to say they want to save the world, you need to really start asking, well, why has he got so much fucking money in his bank and he's not saving the fucking world? Why we got comic relief with loads of millionaires asking poor people for money to help other poor people and the rich people are watching like, oh, it's nice, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? You know what, I'm going to give two mil myself so it looks like I've actually given some. It's, it's like me giving 20p for fuck's sake. Pete, I really do like Elon Musk, mate. I'm, I'm, I know some people think he's part of the problem, think he's part of the elite, but I think it's quite clear by the fact that he's not got his companies in certain places. He's willing to up and root them. He's... He's been privatised space travel. He's actually got NASA paying him to put satellites up now, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, bro. It's like, he, I really honestly think that he's one of one of the guys. He's definitely not an oil guy, is he? These new guys coming about now, they want solar power, they want clean energy, they want rockets that land themselves so we can go back up in it again. Do you know what I mean? They want reusable, they want a circular economy like nature is. Nothing in nature's rubbish. Nothing in nature's rubbish. It's either food for maggots right at the bottom, food for worms, food for a bird, food for a tree. Nothing's rubbish. You could, I could die sat here now. I'm not rubbish. Something's going to come along and eat me. I'd become food for something. Like legitimate food. Or I'd become a nest for fly eggs. I get transferred into a different vessel, something else for the for nature to then recycle and use. And that's what we as humans need to start doing, recycling everything. So we're in a circular economy that constantly goes in a circle. And I truly believe taxation should be a fucking circle as well if someone can work it out. Where like you have the living wage that we're getting now, currently just giving a living wage, you go and spend it, the corporations give it back to the government and the government gives it back to you. The government just takes a little cut now and then to, to do up the country. People who work will still pay tax and stuff. It's got to be worked out. The, the artificial intelligence guys are trying to work that out at the moment. Uh, what's a living wage? What's a survival wage? Uh, and this could be another test to decipher that, really. You never know. But um, I've got a feeling the internet will go down. Oh, Pete, oh, that's a big shower. We speak about that yesterday, though. Know, if it goes down, how long for? Like, how devastating would, it, would, would, the, would the damage have to be to actually kill the internet forever? could they not just rebuild it like with the knowledge we've got now you'd have to take out all the scientists too 
So imagine all the scientists in the world who know how to build the internet within a year or two, even within a fucking five years or a decade. Whatever disaster happens to take out the internet needs to take out them people as well. Otherwise, they're just going to rebuild it straight away when they've survived, if, if they survive in a certain capacity. Whereas if you lose them people, the people remaining need to all hope that the information remains and we can learn it to rebuild it. Well, that, that's what you're talking fucking asteroid impact there, bruh. I won't mind being in the group of... Group of... Um, I won't mind being in the group of survivors, I was going to say. Elon Musk will mine the mule for helium... Uh, the mule. The moon for helium free when uh, they build a decent enough engine to use it and systems to be powered by it. I think helium free is a decent, decent fuel, and what a, it would be a good step towards antimatter and that, as opposed to hydrocarbons. Would use hydrocarbons in space. Titan's full of it. If you go to like the moon, Titan, full of it. I think it's round Saturn in it. Round Saturn, Titan. If it's not round Saturn, it's round Jupiter. But it's full of hydrocarbons. It's got hydrocarbon lakes for fuck's sake. It's got lakes made of oils and fucking petrols and shit. Like, our lakes and water seas are water, theirs is hydrocarbons. Get as much sun as you can while it's still cheap. Trump putting tariffs on it through the blockchain. They're putting fucking CO2 tariffs on soon, won't they? I've seen that happening. I've seen that. Oh, look at how clear the cities are. Now we've not been driving and that. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to tax you on CO2. Like, you mean CO? You mean CO? Carbon monoxide. You don't mean carbon dioxide. Come on. Let's not be silly. Let's not believe the propaganda. They mean carbon monoxide. Come on, Ollie. Back me up, bro. You know the script. With your F gases and your fucking knowledge of it all. <laughs> you still here? Ollie, I need you. <laughs> ah, but don't believe the hype, man. It's carbon monoxide is the majority carbonated fucking molecule in the air in the greenhouse gases it's not co2 it's co you know the one that you got alarms for because it fucking kills you comes out your car exhaust and all that you're gonna tax you on your breath in a decade if you can mate you need to be careful who's this guy we're talking about bill wood Who's Bill Wood? Have you seen that video, Donald Trump is the trumpet? Donald Trump will become a trumpet. It's from about 2007. And there's a guy like, Donald Trump will become the trumpet. He'll get in our office and he's gonna tear that shit down. He doesn't say tear that shit down, but you know what I mean? It's fucking mad as fuck, that 13 years ago. Shouting that Trump's gonna end up a trumpet in the in the office. It's pretty crazy, mate. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Trump will become a trumpet. Oh, the bug is sick. CO carbon monoxide, Paul. You're not wrong, bruh. You're not wrong. Yeah, the the news and the propaganda machine will have you believe it's CO2. Completely different fucking molecule, man. And can you like people are we talk, they don't teach do they even teach science at fucking schools these days mate talking about they don't teach economics and monetary policy and they don't teach politics and they don't teach true history they don't, they don't even really teach fucking science and maths mate not the way they could any more than 50 parts per million yeah is that there you go there you go that's why you got your alarms in your houses guys get your fucking gas out your house, gas boiler's gone, gas cooker's gone, get it gone, electric baby, clean electric as well, them, 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 them roof tiles Elon Musk's done that just look like normal roof tiles, just wait for them to become a little bit cheaper, slap them on your roof, keep your chimney with them around the chimney, nice little wind turbine coming off the chimney as well, so you get wind power at night, you know the dance, you know the dance, become self-sustaining with that shit, get gas out your house, you think about it, 240 volts we've got in the UK. We only need 240 volts now to warm water and cook food. People realise that, as most people realise that. 
the wattage and amps and currents required to heat water um, and cook food and all that is the reason we have 240 volts in the systems we've got. Everything else these days, from your mobile phones to your TV to your laptop to everything else that's not cooking food or warming water up, everything else can pretty much be 24 volt now. Do you know what I mean? ACDC, Tesla Edison, mate. It's like full circle, bruh. It's crazy. So you could tokenize weed blockchain for where it was grown and how it was treated. Oliver, make no mistake. You think the dispensaries and laboratories are not going to do that? You can have a QR code on the fucking pack of buds you buy. So you buy a little jar of buds, you'll have a QR code on it. You'll scan the QR code. And like the V-Chain did with the milk, it's going to show you the bud factory. What bud's in the pack, as long as it's sealed and unopened and untampered with. It's going to give you the medical value of it. Is it good for anxiety? Is it good for depression? Is it a pick-me-up? Is it a calm-me-down? Do you know what I mean? All these different things that weed smokers actually know different weeds do to you. They, yeah, they all have a different effect on you. So you might want one that picks you up. You might want one that calms you down. You might want one that raises your appetite. You might be on a diet and you want one that, that reduces your appetite. All kinds of effects can be get can be had from cannabis and it will be scanning the QR code that give people the confidence to know that they're buying the right weed for the right purpose. They could just be buying a balm. You might not be buying a bud for the joint. You might just be getting a, a balm, like a, a, a cream for your joints because you've got arthritis. So which creams are best for the arthritis and the joint I've got? Do you know what I mean? Scan the QR code to find out. That's being done, bruh. That is internet of value right there, right now, being done without the ilp connectors for simple interoperability of value within them networks now v chain and stuff like that have got their own currency there that no doubt can be implicated in many use cases again go and check the project see what you think about it see if you want to buy so latest car take care pal appreciate you being in the in the chat mate thanks years ago they rolled out thousands of smart meters at lots of people's houses a lot of people began complaining and getting headaches that's interesting Headaches off the smart meters, eh? They're not really that smart either, are they? We've called every we we started we called stuff digital and smart too early. Oh, we're going digital. Radio's going digital. Like this radio's digital now just because it's got buttons instead of dials. Well, it's got digital buttons, but it's not digital radio. Digital radio came with DAB, didn't it? Called shit digital or like when it just really, really wasn't back in the day. It's quite strange. Appreciate that, Carl. Hit the like and sub. Much appreciated. Germany had us over with card mission V chain. Go to sort that one out. They're currently delisting cannabis companies off the exchanges in the UK. Oh, I bet they're doing that in the UK because they want to monopolize the market, don't they? They're a monopoly for them at the moment. You know the people, right, Pablo, in the UK, these are the people that try and tell their, the, the, the people that have put them in charge, that trusted them, and then they turn around and say that cannabis has got no medical value. And then they also turn around, shut the door, go inside, and open up the biggest medical cannabis farm on the planet. So if it's got no medical value, why the fuck are you growing medical cannabis, bruh? That's like me cooking a steak while I say I don't really like steak. And I'm fucking cooking one right in front of you. And then I start eating it and I'm like, I don't like steak, mate. Oh my God, that's fucking beautiful. But I don't like steak, mate. <laughs> when are people going to wake up to what our government do, man? Like, it's serious, like, that's what I keep saying. Democracy through consensus, man. Get on the phone and let's fucking change shit right now. Get the government app on a blockchain, consensus algorithm, and let's start getting some ideas down and make some positive changes. The first one being dropping their fucking bonuses, yeah, dropping their wages and stopping them from just implementing laws like that, like farts in the chamber, mate. Seriously, there's more laws coming out of the chamber than these farts. And the laws stink worse, mate, I'm telling you. Modem going out to the trays to temper the drugs. So the temperature of the drugs shipping. So this is what happened with the milk on V chain. It was going the temperature of the milk and stuff. So the logistics. So you need to understand that part, big part of regulations within the internet of value and DLT is going to be 
the insurance and who's in charge during the logistical phases when it's being passed from one to the other. Um, just the same way as what, what happens to car insurance when the car drives itself. No human is paying car insurance once it's fucking cars driving itself. Like, nah, bruh, whoever made the car is putting the trust in the fucking car. The car's driving, not me. If the car crashes, it's the car's fucking fault. Therefore, it's whoever wrote the algorithm's fault. Is it a Volkswagen vehicle? Is it a, a Mercedes vehicle? Who's, who made the vehicle and who's, who's liable to the reason it crashed? Who's, who's, whose fridge was the milk in when it went to fucking 10 degrees and went off? Do you know what I mean? It's just all the all, all the fruit. Who had the fruit when it got battered? You're gonna some guys are gonna be picking fruit up. It could be battered. The boxes is like I'm not taking them, mate. I'm not taking them. And then as good as blockchain is, then what happens to that supply chain when there's conflict of something's happened or it's got damaged? It's fucking interesting. That's why all these other ones like B chain and that have clearly got purpose and why they're doing well currently. Because they don't need to worry about what the currency is doing or what value the currency is. The fact of the matter is the databases work and it's and it's got a use case, it's working, people are using it. You've seen it, I've shown you the milk on the video. Just, just Google it. Um, tracking milk via QR in China. Go to videos, pick the one on Twitter, you'll see. And then no doubt there's loads of other videos, but that's just one of them. The milk's a great example because it shows you the cows at the, at the farm. These smart meters and these smart home hubs and all this shit that you're getting off these people now that you're buying off Hive and you're buying off Samsung. I was trying to say, you can build yourself. If you spend enough time trying to learn it, I've tried, I struggled, I need to wait till I get onto someone who knows I'm coding a little bit more. I'm going to go and hopefully speak to Dave and see if we can figure it out together a little bit. But if you can build a small ledger, personal private ledger on Hyperledger Fabric or Ethereum, Create your own little token for in your house to give your kids pocket money and stuff. But everything on a database, all your smart stuff. And then run Node through Node Red. You can basically create your own Alexa, your own smart hub, your own smart home, your own connectors. And have your own wallet. And it all be yours and you in control of it. All private, permissioned by you. If you buy the Samsung hub, you're buying Samsung's hub. This is where you get the spy chips. The location tracking shit, all this bullshit. Again, if you could make, if only you could make your own phone in it. Do you know what I mean? Imagine you could make your own phone and, and know that you could block. You could still use Google Maps, but have the location blocked. There's people that probably do that. Well, fucking tour and using a mad IP and all stuff like that. Later, Peter. Sorry, everyone just seen that comment. Appreciate you coming in. Um, have a good day, pal. So how do you think China feel about Ripple being a USA based company? I know the XRP ledger is separate, but do you not think the USA could put pressure on Ripple to do their bidding? But Ch Bank of China is um, a Hyperledger member, mate, and the interoperability protocol within Hyperledger is Hyperledger Quilt, which was built by Ripple. Again, they're all in bed together through the W3C. So it's basically like, How's the W3C acting to it? And it's a open protocol. It's an open source based protocol at its core. And there's an American company that built it. And an American company has also offered the standard for a really, really fast and secure, reliable asset. Um, I would imagine it's up to a Chinese company to build a competitor to XRP in the next five years and keep an eye out for it, mate. Keep an eye out for it. Basket of currencies, level playing field of choice. Chris Larson said it himself. Rewatch it. There'll be a group of currencies. It's just they got on it first, man. It was the first there, so they're in the lead. They're setting the standards. It doesn't mean that someone else in Russia won't make theirs. That there won't be a British company that makes a token that also gets in the SDR that's as fast as XRP and as reliable. This is where they said I always said like you might get the Chinese guy that's not going to use an American thingy, but if he programs is is algorithms to search for the fastest, cheapest route through ILP, then he's got no choice but to use XRP because the machine to machine is going to do it. It's going to choose the fastest, cheapest route, which is XRP. So we either stay programming it as a human and say, no, I want to use this, which he then has to do with every customer. And if every customer is just like, well, just use XRP, mate. Just use XRP. Or I can go to that bank and use XRP. Chinese is like, right, well, fuck it then, use XRP. You still got to agree on both sides what your bridge asset is and stuff, do you know what I mean, within within a settlement. So 
again, David Swartz spoke about this. You can find it all on, on YouTube if you if you dig. The biggest kind of farm in the UK. It's the biggest. It's the biggest globally, mate. It sells more medical cannabis than any other single farm. I don't know like where exactly the biggest one in the UK is, but it sells more than any other one. It, 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 ILP, where I can read about W3C, just put W3C, the future of payments, and you'll see the Ripple document basically adapted to the W3C. And then just Google who are the W3C, and you'll see that the World Wide Web Consortium and the people who regulate the, the Internet World Wide Web 3W's Consortium, W3C. Yeah, that's what it stands for. So these are the people that decided on the language of the internet on internet um internet protocol ip address they decided the implementations the foundations and the framework and the regulations of how that in interoperability and internet working of data was going to be done and ripple made ilp the interledger protocol which is ip internet um ip address but for value so IP address used is for data, ILP address is going to be for value. And they gave it, the W3C said, here's, here's a protocol that's built the same way as your IP one is, that's made for value instead of data alone, that we can all build on top of and all implement to create a global RTGS system. When Chris Larson and all them talk about the global financial system being rebuilt and renewed, they don't just mean their separate systems being rebuilt and renewed. They mean being connected to an interledger protocol and creating a brand new global RTGS system, real-time growth settlement to just pin currencies like that. And then they build everything else on top of it, the smart contracts related to gold, the smart contracts related to diamonds, the smart contracts related to your house, the smart contracts related to your car, anything of value, your sword on Elder Scrolls, your skin on Fortnite absolutely incredible incredible where it's going golf after the xrp moons raymond if that's your dream then i suggest you open a golf course mate revenue of hobbies yeah you can even get some homeless people gardening so you're helping homeless giving them jobs give them build a little build a little hut on there so they can all live there and you reform them get them off get them off the streets do you know what i mean Get them drug free for a certain time until they're allowed to actually go onto the field. That's when your golf course becomes a true complex that's actually helping people. It's helping you stay happy, play golf. It's helping homeless get off the street and find work. In nature work as well, helping gardening with animals. And, oh, mate, there's so many possibilities when you just look at a hobby and then say, well, how can I turn that into not only a business to give me revenue, sustainable revenue that helps me live a life I love and I'm comfortable with? And can then share and spread my happiness easily. VR golf. It's not the same. Go and pick some homeless guy up though and take him Mackies, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you can always always go and take him Mackies, lad. Nah, but you know what I'm getting at? You know what I'm getting at? Do you know what um, what interests me the other day, what I was thinking about for cars, Volkswagen Golf and, and sell like drivable cars. When there's no longer allowed to have, you know, like fucking, what's it called? Oh, I Am Legend, where he's got his, an iRobot where he's got his petrol bike. iRobot has got his fucking petrol bike and every other bike's and the electric. And I was like, well, you can't ride petrol anymore. And like it's illegal. It was eventually going to be illegal for all them cars to be on the road and for the human to be in charge of a vehicle on the road. So all the cars that are currently on the road could actually be in a stadium going around a destruction derby track while people from anywhere in the world sit in a VR car seat driving them. Like legitimately ridiculously safe destruction derby. Do you know what I mean? They sat home VR racing a fucking car that's in a stadium in Japan. Or in a stadium in America, or a stadium in Manchester, Spain, and you're sat in your bedroom racing the fucking world world championships <laughs> round one. 
do you know what I mean? If you get to round six, you're actually at the stadiums, but in a pod like the Fortnite World Cup, do you know what I mean? But imagine that with actual vehicles, like wireless race off, who's doing it with little remote control cars. Well, what? wait till the point where it's a big car, you've got a free 360 camera where your head would be, and you can look around with your 360 headset on and you're, you're driving an actual fucking car, but remote control it through VR. Mate. Petrol egg for life. That's where it goes though, mate. It's gonna to have to go to VR or get yourself to a racetrack. I've got um I only got a Fiesta Z Tech me, mate. Nice, nice little cheap baby. Think I'm actually thinking about downgrading as well if I can sell it and buy one a little bit cheaper just to get a bit of coin. But um I have had the morning, the morning wake and bake, Scott. Yeah, I'm gonna make some breakfast in a minute. And shit, I'm, I'm mad. I need to change. Put black on and it's killing me. Got a right sweat on, lad. Got a right sweat on wearing black. Do you know? I mean, the destruction derby idea is not a bad idea, but you know what the best thing about self-driving cars to, to come about it is your car going to work for you. You can, like, buy a car that drives itself and it can basically become its own Uber driver. You just, yeah, go out. You have to do it. All you need is a Uber app downloaded into it and it becomes its own Uber driver. That's why Uber will have their own self-driving cars eventually and instead of the drivers making all the money, Uber will then make all the money because the drivers won't be allowed to drive the cars and if they haven't got a self-driving car, they're no longer an Uber driver. They're not an Uber driver. Car can be if it can drive itself. They can't be. That's where you like... You create your own taxi business of own self-driving cars and you undercut Uber and undercut the Volkswagen subscription and stuff like that, mobility as a service is going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Remote F1, I'm probably just going to have some toast and an omelette. Might even have some, in fact, no, I'm having cereal, mate. I'm having wheat a bit because I'm boiling. I'm absolutely boiling, mate. I'm jumping a cold shower. I'm probably going to catch some rays today, boost the, boost the tannage before summer. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, Chris Larson on that podcast, man. That was beautiful to my ears, that. That's everything I want to hear, you know. I'm sick of this, cross-border this, cross-border that, remittance. I'm not sick of it. Don't get me wrong. It's good when they get another corridor and all that, and the reach expands, like the reach of IOV and ILP expands, and the reach of RippleNet expands. It's positive news, but I'm getting sick of the powers that be and the people in charge of saying what they can say to the mass uh, audience, not saying that once once the banks are comfortable and we get past remittance, it is going to grow into an internet of value. I've never heard them say that once on CNN and I go, oh, what, what do you mean internet of value? I mean, if someone's seen it where they've gone in depth on, on a chat that's not at Davos or some shit, that's on fucking Sky News, I'd love you to uh, drop us a link because... That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the narrator to change from cross-border currency to cross-network settlement. Just cross-network transaction. Cross-network. I getting cross-network. I getting cross-network. Cross-currency is fucking done. Why wreck to edit it up, mate? <laughs> Uphold, edit up. You just need the same account on, on each side. You want to send your cousin money now. Don't use transfer, go. If... If you are a foreign worker now in a foreign country and you're working and you're sending remittance payments home and you're using someone like MoneyGram or TransferGo or Western Union, who's charging a big fee, stop using them. Stop using them. Join Uphold or Wirex or anyone like that and get your family member to join them as well and just send them the XRP legitimately. The money at the end of the week, you put your wages on the Uphold you flip a little bit of it for XRP. You send XRP to your auntie's um, wallet. She gets a ping. XRP's just arrived in Uphold because she's got the notifications on. Go straight onto it. Changes it into a local currency. And everyone's fucking happy. Fuck you, MoneyGram. Fuck you, Transfer Go. And fuck you, Western Union. I've decided to start becoming my own bank. Controlling my value. Myself. And going for the fees I'm comfortable with. Don't get me wrong, Wirex going to charge you as an off-ramp, not as much as Uphold. So you've got a choice. Internet of value, healthy choice. It's already appearing. It's there. It's getting there.
Fucking buying a jumbo jet. Imagine that, mate. <sighs> Merc AMG. Fucking hell, man. I'd be happy with a Focus RS, mate. Just get me a Focus. Someone just buy me a Focus RS. I'll have a stiffy for a decade, mate. <laughs> what are you joking? Like, damn. Latest Sam XRP. Appreciate you coming into the chat, mate. I'm going myself soon, so you won't miss much. It's just the wind down, lad. It's just the wind down. Not, not, not the wind downs lasted lasted 45 minutes at times. So, Audi S3. See what I'm saying, Scott? Not that nice, modest vehicle like that, mate. Nice cars. Stick S line on the end, though, or something, mate. R3, RS3. What I'm saying. Don't no 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 standard A3 for my boys. No standard A3 for our for our community. Do you know what I mean? We'll have to get pitching in, mate. Make sure you get that RS3. Something's going on there. If you don't, you know, I'm not just taking a st standard Focus, mate. No chance. I'm that man. Want the RS? What a brand new RS Focus in 2023. That's what we're looking for. I am a Ford boy, then, mate. And when I buy my GT40, yeah. You bring whatever you've got to pet to play the part, eh? and I'm afraid it's just driving skills, eh, bro? You go for what you buy, you ain't gonna be that rich yet. <laughs> Still 2025, 20, you better be you better have something that keeps up with a GT40 in time, mate. I can just about fit in a GT40. Six foot one. If you're six two, forget it, mate. No, forget it. Six three or four is more forget it, but you're gonna be uncomfortable at six two in a GT40. Four to legit, mate. Ford's are nice cars. You do well to get a better driving car um, than, Ford, than Ford in our neck of the woods. Also, nice cheap parts when you go wrong, mate. Don't get me wrong, Volkswagen are the daddies at making vehicles. Let's not kid ourselves. Volkswagen are the fucking daddies. The daddies. The daddies. Do you know who they own? <laughs> People not seeing that shit. Do you know what I mean? For the, for the, just just in case you don't, Volkswagen actually own Bugatti, the, some of the fastest cars in the world, Ducati, the Ferrari of the motorbikes. They own Bentley, Lamborghini, Seat, um, Skoda, Audi, Land Rover, few others that they they, they, they fucking own it, mate. Volkswagen. Are the fucking daddies. Go right, all my Volkswagen lovers, right now, go to Google. When not right now, but when this ends, go to Google and put in. Let me just make sure that comes up. Mobility as a service, 2050 vision. Volkswagen. Because I need to make sure you get the right search. Putting in Volkswagen M A A S. PDF because that's a search I've done in the past and it seems to have found it. Yeah, and I've shown this before, so it's not new new information to other people, but go and search for that document there. Leadership in mobility as a service. And you will see the Volkswagen FOB. Now, is it gonna be a there'll be a Bentley fob, there'll be this fob, there'll be that fob, everyone's gonna end up having the fob. So you'll either have your own self-driving car or you're gonna to subscribe to Uber as and when you want to travel, or you'll subscribe to Volkswagen so you can just push the fob as and when you want. Um What a show too much on here, but I want to get the fob up. So people know, because I want people to realise that we know this is coming, and we know it's coming. There's a Volkswagen fob. There, a little fob, and push that little blue button there, because you're paying the subscription. The self-driving vehicle is going to come and fucking pick you up. And then I was saying, like, insurance. Volkswagen is then insuring that vehicle under the mobility as a service. It's going to be... Unbelievable. They've actually built Cedric. You see the little girls run out of Cedric there if it zooms in. And in the end, they'll just be self-driving trucks that's not even got a cab for a human because it doesn't need one. Wait till you see them flying up and down the motorway. 
Don't be surprised when you do, because you saw them here first, mate. <laughs> but seriously, I'm a Volkswagen fan. <laughs> Fans, eh? Go and check that document out. It talks about they're not going to... So Volkswagen is the biggest car company in the world. That document actually talks about them no longer being a car and vehicle manufacturer, but being a mobility as a service provider. It's pff, blows Volkswagen right open, mate. They'll have multiple arms from doing executive subscriptions. So you'll have a Bentley vehicle. A ben Imagine the Bentley Cedric. Just a standard Volkswagen Cedric, that. There will be a Bentley one. Do you know what I mean? Imagine a Lamborghini Cedric. Oh, mate. Like, legitimately, this, this is coming. And you'll subscribe to the description. Um, Porsche is owned. Who do you think owns Porsche, bruh? You think Cones Porsche, bruh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, but Volkswagen owns Porsche, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> Ferrari, I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Volkswagen, mate. There's not many car companies Volkswagen don't own. People need to realise that. Like Ferrari, your big ones, and some, some of your other ones. Say your big ones, you'd have thought Porsche, but there's only a few companies. Volkswagen haven't actually pulled under the umbrella now, guys. So, yeah, mobility as a service is only going to be challenged by the likes of possibly... So, who's outside it off the top of my head? Ferrari, Mercedes, Jaguar, Coinseg, your extreme... Your McLarens, your extreme sports cars, Ford. Do you know what I mean? Um, Fiat. There, there is Mazda, your Japanese mates are not under under Volkswagen. There is some, do you know what I mean? Like Toyota or your GTs, you've got some good vehicle manufacturers out there that are not under Volkswagen. But you only have to look at the Audis, the VWs, the Skodas, um, to realise that, that fucking VWs had an influence on every single fucking one of them. Or what I say, Lotus kept itself, but I don't think it did, you know. Poor Lotus. TVR didn't even keep itself. Do you own TVR now? Um. Gila, yeah. So another corporation's actually um owns Lotus now. Owns fifty one percent of the company. I would have bought them out. Um. Volvo, you always forget about Volvo. Who owns TVR now? Who owns TVRs? Even if you're still making TVRs. <gasps> TVR is an independent British manufacturer of high-end sports cars. The company manufactures light sports sports cars in powerful engines and was at one time the third largest specialised sports car manufacturer in the world, offering a diverse range of coupes and convertibles. Defunct. 2012. There was another one. Created though, founded Whiteley, TVR Whiteley in 2013. Yeah, so there is some. So it's interesting, like what 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 brand would you go to for, for mobility as a service? Are you looking to buy your own self-driving McLaren? Your own self-driving Ferrari? We are looking at 20, between 2030 and 2040. Yeah, this is not like next fucking week <laughs> or 2025. There's a small chance if the public demands it that it will come in before 2025 for emissions purposes. They get all the electric cars and then sooner or later the electric cars will split to self-driving cars. But we're really looking at the long haul, aren't we? We have about 15 years. But then who are you going to choose? Whose vehicle are you going to get in? Mobility as a service. Maybe we'll have a chat about this tomorrow. Like, who are you going to use? Who are you going to trust? If you're going to buy some gold, where are you going to store it? You're gonna, you you want to be your own bank, you're going to buy some gold and store it at home. Safety deposit box. The new regulated custodial services from the Bank of England offering smart contract facilitated storage and custody of gold. Insured. Will be sent to wherever you want it upon upon sale. Do you know what I mean? What what what's what what the way? How do people see this going out? You know what I mean? How do people see see it panning out and all these all these gains and monies coming and that? 
XRP flag on each car. So what you want is a light blue McCap McLaren with the ripple flash on the side. Like with a flash in blue with his ripple logo on his chest, XRP logo on his back. Scott be at the back in his Focus RS. Mate, not gonna spend 40 grand on it. Tear it up. Mate, don't make me buy a Skyline V-Spec 2 and I'll eat all your fucking cars up just by spending 20 grand on it, mate. You're talking about a petrol head from the 90s here, Ole. Careful, mate. We'll get a Cosworth and just eat you. I'll get an XR2 and smoke your fucking golf, mate. <laughs> Once you're on a track, mate, I don't give a fuck how big your engine is. If you ain't got the balls to drive around them corners at the speed I have, then you ain't going to win, bruh. Like, you talk, like seriously. <laughs> we, we, we're going to a track one day, mate. Not no Daytona Circle. Fucking Daytona Circle bullshit. I mean, a proper fucking track. We'll get on Silverstone or something. Monte Carlo, mate. Focus versus the Golf. <laughs> oh, fucking, have you got an automatic, you? In America, how, how well do you drive stick, lad? Because we ain't going for them fucking Tiptronic or any no automatic bullshit. We're driving stick, baby. And if you, you're not even allowed on the track if your car's not got a fucking stick. We're not, we're not, we're not cheating with them fucking cheat codes. None of that. Old school. <clears throat> Stage one remap. Do all the remaps, all the remaps, all the boosters, all the turbos, all the goodies. We go we get all the goodies. That's why if you get a GT, a GTR, Nissan Skyline, V-Spec 2. Yeah, from 2001 onwards, before it became the, the monstrosity that it is now. If you get the V-Spec 2. Nismo and spend 20 grand on new twin turbos and nitrous kit and the rest of it. Go online and watch V Spec 2, GTR V Spec 2 versus Bucata or Bugatta. Did I say Bucata then? I meant Bugatta. And look for the white ones, the white GTR. It eats it, mate. It eats it. It's what you know. Not what not what you uh it's what you know and how you use it, mate. Godzilla. Oh stop it, Pablo. Spent 16 k on your golf and disappeared from outside your house. Fucking hell, mate. When was that? You don't be trapped these days and that straight in a fucking container that in it. Straight to the nearest port and in a container, mate. Horrible bastards. There's people who rob them from like Manchester and they drive straight to Liverpool and put them in a container and they're fucking gone within 12 hours, mate. Just gone. Out of the UK. The person's only just fucking waking up in the morning thinking, where's my fucking car? Thinking it could be around a corner burnt out and it's on a fucking ship on its way to China or some shit. It's madness, mate. There we go. Go and watch that, mate. Go and watch that, mate. And go and watch a 40,000, well, uh, let's say 60,000 pound car. 30 grand to buy the Nissan at peak price in, in sick condition. So you're looking at 30 grand to buy the Skyline GTR R34, yeah? And you're looking at about 15, 25 grand putting in the engine kits on to soup it up. And go and watch it. Eat that fucking Bugatti up, mate. Go and watch it. Tear it a new fucking arsehole. Seriously. Now, in the long run, the Bugatti's catching it because it's clearly got a higher top speed. The Bugatti's top speed is just way beyond the skyline. But off the fucking line and down a long enough straight and with a good enough driver, that Bugatti's never catching that fucking skyline, mate. Never catching it. If he had to hit a corner and it hits the corners, the first few corners better than the Bugatti, he's fucking gone, lad. I'm telling you. It's the same with the Toyota Supra. That's why... Fast and Furious picked them cars up. They're not just pulled two cars out of the fucking ass on Fast and Furious. And Paul Walker in Fast and Furious doesn't love the shit out of the GTR V Spec 2 even more than the new monstrosity it's become for nothing. There's reasoning behind why he loves that fucking car. It's because it, it is the best version of the Skyline and always fucking will be, mate. Legitimately. Subaru. Super, see, this is what I'm saying by it. As impressive as them American cars are doing wheelies and all that shit, 
it's never been quite as impressive as the speed Japanese can get out of a two liter engine. I mean, what the fuck, mate? Seriously. Most people back in the day to keep up with the Subarus and the Mitsubishi Lancers and all that shit, and you're talking cars that just have two and 2.2 .2 liter engines, 2.5 maximum, kind of like what the, what the um, Focus ST is now. But on the other side of the pond, you're talking like a 3.24 litre just to keep up with it, mate. What, like, yeah, great engines built in America and all that shit, but come on, mate. You're talking about fucking engines half the size on the, in, in Japan, being able to keep up with four litre beasts. Like, Japanese are incredibly in, inventive in, and geniuses in, in how much speed they got out of such small engines. It's fucking madness. I'm a boy racer. I used to be, lad. I used to be. It don't really bother me now. That's why I've got a fucking fo uh, Fiesta Z Tech, mate. <laughs> Still had to be a little sport, eh? You know what I mean? I just have a Fiesta. I had to be the Z Tech S. It's the fastest version of that engine. The fastest version of the 1.6. Or is it 1.4 or 1.6? I don't fucking know, but it's the fastest version of it. But yeah. I told you the wind down's gonna end up 15, 20 fucking minutes, didn't I? Yeah, we've covered the Chris Larson bit. I mean, I'm about to close the stream very, very soon. So if you wanna watch it now live, like straight away, just rewind the fucking stream straight back to the beginning and start it again. Because once I turn it off, YouTube's gonna start processing it and you won't be able to watch for, for a certain amount of time. Um, I need to go and get some some weight of and that. But um it was legitimately fucking over two hours ago. Was got went through right at the beginning. The first half an hour, 40 minutes is just me listening to the podcast. Um and listening to what Chris Larson had to say on Block Stars with David um David Schwartz. Cheers, Daniel. I appreciate everyone taking the time out to watch and mate. But um you have a duke, any car's better than nothing, so remember that. But yeah, I'm going to have to go, get a bit more comfortable, get some sustenance in me, get another drink and cool down. But internet of value and interoperability is what it's all about. It's what it's always been about. It's what I've been trying to tell everyone it's about for over two years now. We watch it, take it all in, go and rewatch a globalisation documentary, take all that in, especially the second half of of how much of an impact this is going to have on places like Africa and the Middle East and places where they've got no financial services, they struggle to get access to financial services, they've got business ideas, they've got, they can create, I've, I've seen people in jungles creating chairs out of bamboos, they've got business ideas, if they just had the smartphone and was connected to ILP and at a value, they could start building businesses in the middle of the flaming jungle. So yeah, let's keep a positive mind on it Regardless of the negative, I'm willing to have the conversation about them possibly wanting to chip and enslave us and all that shit. I'm willing to have the conversation and debate it, but I would rather the main narrative remain positive in the fact that internet of value, globalization, and on a level playing field for all is a vision of positivity at its core. Stop trying to drag negativity into it, guys. Let's stay positive, let's stay happy, and let's grow with the tech. Yeah? I love yous, man, and I really, really fucking do. I appreciate y'all. Um, thank you, Alan, for coming in again. Again, I, I appreciate y'all. Cheers, Scott. Appreciate him. Appreciation for you, Oliver, mate. Everyone in the chat, everyone who's been in the videos, everyone who likes, shares, subscribe. Mwah. Much love for y'all. Uh, we will meet one day, every single one of us, have our day in the sun. Make no mistake. And keep an eye out for DLT Con at Manchester when the end of this fucking lockdown comes. I'm going to speak to the hotel in the next few weeks about if they've got signs of reopening and what happens to the reservation. Um, because clearly there's people who were reserved before us now who haven't got theirs, who are going to want theirs at the reopening. So we might actually end up in a fucking waiting list that pushes the conference to about January or February. But it will stay at the venue. It will still go ahead. And we're legitimately just waiting to see to find out what happens. Shit times. But let's stay positive. Again, thank you. Invest in yourselves. Your hobbies, your ideas. Some time that makes you happy. 
invest in the internet of value yeah turn them hobbies into revenue leave a little bit of an investment legacy for your family create generation wealth do whatever you can live long and hodl onto everything you hold dear guys um and like we talked about earlier with the exit strategies and all that in your life decide who you actually really want to be what life you want how much is it going to cost and at what price are you going to be able to get that yeah when you get happy you can then turn around and start helping others get truly happy and it's hard to get truly happy while you've got money stress financial insecurities of where the bills the bills the bills once we're away from that stress, guys, it is onwards and upwards, and it is just a matter of time. Wishing health and happiness to you and yours. We love crypto, we love XRP, we love Chris Larson's vision of IOV, and we love you. Peace out, and I'll see you on the next one.